everybody. Uh, welcome to Rolf Damage. We're finally live after sitting here 15 minutes. We're very, very sorry about that. There was many questions asked by the cast in the, like, all right, we're about to go live. Anyone got anything? And then just stuff happens. Here he is blaming I us. Ask no questions. Mostly near. Mostly near. He's just just no near way. being near. Um... <laughs> Anyways, and, and we, we had some discussions to do. Anyways, welcome to Roll for Damage. This is mm -hmm. the scales above. Uh, they are currently in the Hellbound arc. They have had a good time running around causing chaos in the Hells, which is exactly what the Hells want. Before we start, I'm just going to say thank you very much to Bree and Shelby for the art and overlays and whatnot. Uh, it will be getting updated I say soon. I've said soon for six months. It'll get updated soon, TM. Um, but before we start the game proper, we will have a quick run through of the players saying hello, telling us about the character, and we will have one of them. Everyone has to nominate someone to give the uh, recap, and that someone cannot be me. Let's see who gets the most votes. You cannot I would nominate just like yourself. To volunteer. No! <laughs> She'll go for it. I wanted to see Mayhem, alright? And you ruined it. You got to see Mayhem last week, alright? Okay, so, uh, Sarah, who are you? Fuck, alright. <laughs> she just left. I don't know. <laughs> don't oh. Hi, I'm sure. Um,. I'm gonna be playing Tick today, our barbarian, while our other barbarian is away. Um, I don't really know what else to say right now. <laughs> what else am I supposed to add to that? That's it. Yeah, you, you can you can stop yeah. now if you want. Cool, I'm gonna <laughs> it's do up, that. It's up to you. <laughs> I did it. I'm gonna do that. Proud of you. <laughs> oh, my coffee hasn't kicked in yet. Okay. Uh, Sean. Hi, my name is Sean, otherwise known as uh, <clears throat> Sean, uh, creative pro uh, director of Paradise Productions. Um, and, uh, and we are on a small hiatus, but returning very soon, um, including this week for some uh, uh, relaxing in paradise on Wednesday night. Um, and then in December, we have a new show starting on our Monday time slot uh, with a new guest DM on the channel for three shows. Three, three, three sessions, not sessions. Um, I like you saying three uh, shannons, and I was like, what? I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're a brand new three shot called Three Shannons. Uh, we've discovered cloning, but only in paradise. Um, and <laughs> then uh, our uh, new campaign will be announced very soon and, and will be starting in January. Um, and uh, other stuff will be coming in the not too distant future. Um, and I play Oryx Solaris, who uh, was uh, autopiloted last week, I believe. Uh, and I am back now, though. I fix my camera a little bit. I trust the cold calculations of Nova to play. Oryx. Yeah, it was. I'm not going near that fight. I'm gonna just mind link from outside the castle and walk next to it, and that was pretty much it. Um, Telepathic bond. Yeah. <laughs> it was useful. It was very useful. And it is exactly what I would have done. Uh, all right. Next up, we have Mike. Hi, I'm Mike. I'm the dungeon mom over at Wonders and Blunders. Uh, we are a 5e D&D &D podcast, and we are also on a hiatus. Ours has been so long, uh, but I am almost done arranging the episodes to be released. And when they do, you should look out for it because we're doing giveaways for things like this nice little dice box with our logo on it. Ooh. So fancy. Who could have made that? I bet they're talented. Um, I play Leaf, who is a Hellcat in Hell, who wears a cowboy hat. Um, and he lives in Hell. Everybody's visiting me here. It's very nice. It's nice <laughs> to have visitors. <laughs> we'll visit again He's soon. Sweet. <laughs> Friends don't oh. stop by enough when you're in hell. Yeah, um, just, it's been ages. <laughs> Eons, even. All right. Uh, I think that about covers the intros. Um, there's All no right, one fine. left. No one important, really, that we need to uh, talk about. Oh, shit. Well, yeah, no, the, that person can't hear you anymore. Uh, Sorry, hold on. 
she's disappeared. She's gone. She was going to do the recap, and she could say whatever she wants in there. But there we go. There we go. All right, Shelby. Who are oh, wait, you? I and get do to the intro? recap. Am I important enough to intro? Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hi, my name is Shelby, or uh, Shuby Dooby Doo on Twitter, where I'm a Twitter artist and draw a bunch of D and D stuff. On YouTube, I'm Whistle While You Work, where I tell stories about D and D stuff, and I have a little animatic series going that I've been saying has another episode out, and it's in production. It's just slow going. Um, and here on Twitch, I am Shootedles because somebody took my Twitch name, and I just like to be difficult. And uh, yeah, I'm here. I'm a regular player on. Roll for damage. I play in our World of Darkness game. I also play on a channel called Critical Failsafe. Tonight I'll be Nia, our problem child. Actually, I think our smart child, considering what we did yesterday, but or uh, yesterday last session, which I guess I will get into. Go for it. Yes. Yep. All right. So uh, we ran last session a little different. We ran it uh, a little bit more like Blades in the Dark rather than uh, traditional D and D. Um, and it was a heist. We had to break into uh, Bell. So I, I remember there was a weird thing, but Bell versus Bale. It's Bell, right? Bell. 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 Yes. Ring a ding Bell. ding. Got it. Ring a ding ding. It's Bell. Got it. All right. So we had to basically steal Bell's sword during his fancy ass dinner party and maybe humiliate him in the process, was what our initial goal was from Despater. And so. Leaf, uh, Nia, and Tig were mind linked by Auric as and uh, got onto his creepy, like nightmare house moving castle, and uh, got past the uh, first obstacle, I guess, in an interesting way. First, we got to uh, kind of look around a little bit. First, Leaf used his invitation to get us in. We looked around the throne room. Um, and popped our heads into different rooms, uh, ended up taking two letters, which will become important in a moment. Uh, but for now, we had to get past the list imp, which, God rest that poor imp, Tig ate it, <laughs> I'm pretty sure. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I think I know she was wearing it also, so, um that happens but we found out leaf's name was already on the list so we didn't even really have to lie um and leaf's name was on the list out of respect for who leaf is to despater and the fact we are in despater's realm um so that was cool we also ran into orcus on the way up that was fucked up uh and so at that point we had to figure out what the fuck we were going to do in terms of be the entertainment so leaf could sneak off and go look for the sword we hadn't really found it at this point and so we decided Tig and Nia were gonna stage a fight to the death between what looks like a feral elf and an, a tamer of some sort and well it went well enough um they were entertained while Leaf could go off and look for things um Nia almost died and had to use a flashback to get a death ward because she may have lit Tig on fire and that sent Tig, who was already in a feral state, kind of over the edge. Won't be doing that one again. Uh, so while all of this is happening, uh, Leaf is off playing Matador with a uh, a shadow puppy and a tiefling stake. <laughs> um, and shenanigans uh, led to Leaf finding the sword encased in like this weird like demon radioactive glass and he shattered the glass with the shadow pepper and got the sword and uh, then proceeded to just annihilate a bone devil on the way out while Tig carried a lifeless Nia out of the uh, dining room. And at that point, we were kind of found out because uh, Leaf dealt 180 damage at once and just obliterated this bone devil off the face of existence. Um, and so we were being chased, and we met Auric outside of the castle, right when they were about to get us, who teleported us to the bottom of, uh, I believe it was Dispater's Tower, I think it was called the Iron Spire? Iron Scepter, but yes. Scepter. It's known yes. as the Iron Spire, the Iron Tower, the Iron Scepter, the big yeah. phallic-looking object. The big fuck-off tower that Dispater lives in, how's mm -hmm. that? We are currently there, Nia is almost dead tig i don't remember if you got that hurt at all i'm pretty sure my magic did shit to you <laughs> like fuck all to you um 
and uh, Leaf has the sword. We also left behind a, a letter that may incriminate someone else. I'm not sure. Uh, we'll, we'll see what comes of that. And we have two coded letters that we are uh, have been given the out of game homework to decipher ourselves. Yeah, I gave that to them right before the session and Mike and uh, Sean have just been intently staring at it for about half an hour now. Um... <laughs> I have think you guys? Even while this recap was going on, they were sort of still down. trying to figure it out. Have you managed to figure out any of it yet? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I want. I, I'll just throw this out. They're two different letters from different people, meaning they might not have the same cipher. Oh, I'm not even. Yeah, I'm just looking at the first letter. I'm. I know. I figured that, so I was just going to. I'll go look at the other one later. Yeah, let's focus on the first. Um, right. So. You all teleport to the base of this tower. Uh, I'm going to have I'm gonna I'm gonna throw the spotlight on you today, Sean, uh, because you were the one that like was like come on come on come on, and then you grab them, you teleported, and you're there with a bit of a burst of displaced air. Uh, there's a few mortals, a few devils walking around the city. It is a big, you know, bizarre and, and one of the attractions of the multiverse really even though it's in hell so you've got some stairs uh some also due to the fact that you're holding a uh large i think he's large large sized great sword leaf uh that is constantly emanating enough light through the fire that goes along it to light up about yeah, let's say a city block uh so it's 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 giving off a lot of light and that fire is really really damaging to demons this sword is a demon killer so uh you finish your teleport you arrive you notice all the the stairs what do you do auric um hmm that is a good question um <laughs> teleporter somewhere else no. <laughs> um so we have this massive sword mm -hmm. uh and all this and everyone is staring at us right now uh-huh <sighs> hey is that that sword just someone in the crowd <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to do. Um, Anyone else can jump in here. I'm gonna... just... In the Wait. tower. <laughs> You're unconscious right now, aren't you? No, I'm no, not. One no, HP. not. One HP. One but HP. I was carrying you out like an animal. Yes, yes, yes yep, but she was faked like... being unconscious and you faked yeah, wanting yeah. to eat her. Orcus, Orcus yeah. called me out for specifically not being dead. Cool, so, cool, cool. Awesome. Uh, no, Nia's just going to cough through like fucking, like a bunch of blood, like, get in the tower, please. Right, I'm going to get down on all fours and roll my shoulders and start like growling at everyone to like keep back, um, like guarding the rest of the party. Can I cast a spell, please? Uh, sure. I just want to heal myself. <laughs> yep. I'm going to expend my seventh level slot, and I'm going to cast heal on myself. With a <laughs> verbal and somatic component and a bright flash of divine healing energy, which now gains the rest of the eyes that weren't already looking at you. Now, like, everyone... Yeah on the fucking yeah. grand promenade is just like what was that uh don't give a fuck you. i have 80 extra hit points now and you must have get in the tower to the rest of them yeah i <laughs> it's like she was getting ready to cast she's like get in the fucking tower i'm gonna turn around and yell at everyone just go <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Leaf is kind of like strolling with the sword, kind of like spinning it in the air, like looking at it and uh, like noticing all the people looking at him. Uh, it's just like, well, whoa, don't you have something to do? Get out of my face. Uh, yeah, I'd say a good half of them, just because of who you are and what you're doing. 
sort of move on. And uh, you all, I assume, move into the tower now? Yeah. No one said they're going, really. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm backing away, trying to, like, urge everyone into the tower direction while keeping I will start the crowd at bay. The tower. Um, actually, as Leaf goes and tells everyone, you know, mind your own business, like, what are you looking at? I'm going to sort of jump over to a side and lunge a little bit at this crowd and try and push them back a little more just with Make like an intimidation lunging. check. Sean, Sean, you can do the cipher mm -hmm. later, buddy. I'm not looking at the cipher. I'm just very thrown off because I was not here last week, so I okay. don't I'm have the same sense of urgency as everyone else. Uh, dirty, dirty 20. <laughs> yeah no worries uh yeah i'd say a a very good amount now are, are moving on there's only the the bigger more powerful devils are still watching mm -hmm. um as you get in the tower and you move towards the elevator since you've been here before you mm -hmm. ascend uh as you start to get near despater i need everyone to make a wisdom save uh, of course as we're going up the stairs i will cast uh uh a uh, fortune's favor. Um, okay. And the. Uh, what does fortune's favor that? do? Mike. Uh, it's cast at fourth level so that these two and myself have uh, an extra uh, roll if we want on this. Okay. I was going to say, uh, Leaf, you're kind of immune to Despater's presence, uh, having spent so much time near him. I, I, I absolutely just pointed at nothing. My wisdom. <laughs> yeah, you did. And I was just like, Wait, so I in real life I went like this to my Zoom to screen, screen pointing at at, at Tig and that's your that's your that's, your that's your somatic component. <laughs> yeah. uh, Kyle, I have a question. Yes. Because if this fails, I want to use a feature to try and succeed, but I need to know if I failed first, as per my features instructions. So does a sixteen fail? It does. I would like to use favored by the gods to add 2d6 to my or 2d4 to my roll. Go for it. If that succeeds, you can just save your fortune. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Is, that's what I'm thinking. I Ooh, personally okay. going to use my fortune's favor uh, because I rolled does a it. Does a 22 pass? Let me double check as I look up. I think I think I did that math right. Hold on. Uh, I'm sorry, that's 23, not 22. I can count. I know math. The DC for his thing is you fail. Time I'm gonna fail. It's a twenty-three. Fuck. He's yes. All right. Yes. He's just beta. <laughs> Damn it. All right, I fail. All right. Uh huh. Let me guess. Groveling. Um, I wanted to grovel by choice, if I may. <laughs> yep. Yep. All right. Based on 20, last time. Twenty-seven. Twenty-seven. You pass. Okay. All right. So the doors open, and he is holding court of sorts. There are many pit fiends, high-ranking devils here. There are a couple demons, even uh, that seem to be nascent demon lords. They're not quite the the big ones, but they they're getting there. And you walk in, two of you anyway, holding Bell's sword aloft. All eyes are on you. Uh, you yeah, just and Leaf uh, forward. brandishes the sword and says, look what these piggies got from market. Hmm. Very interesting. Thank you, Alan. He calls you forward. He sort of shakes his head for a second. You know, I've been receiving messages, sendings, constantly for the past little while concerning you from Bell. You ruined his party. He's not oh, happy. That's a shame. Uh, it was quite a quite a to do. He looks across to all of you, 
and then he sort of sees uh Nia, did you you crawled forward because you are forced to like your hands and knees i was by the pressure. told that only i thought me and tig were still in the elevator you said only two approached uh no two walks you other two can't approach it's just you will not be able to stand well, I will step foot into the room and immediately go to my hands and knees and then bow. More accurately, since you failed, as you're going up the elevator and you hit that like sphere of presence, you just are already on your hands and knees when the oh, door okay. opens and you can that just works crawl for me. out. That works mm-hmm. for me. If I'm able to follow my friends, I will. I was just under yeah. the impression that cool. I could. So you crawl out. And he sees the damage across the two of you. He's like, Little Tiff, what happened here? Did you engage Belle? Is he asking us or leave? Well, since you're not looking, I guess you can either intuit or leave can answer. Well, I, I don't know if I can answer. What, what does this presence do? It's just knocking you to your hands and feet at the moment. Mm. I'll leave um, to leave. Not bad or... Not battle Bell, she battle Tig. Interesting. Explain. There's some uh, entertainment for dinner. We, uh, despite how things turned out, I mean, obviously things turned south after we left, but uh, we it were turned there to south make the party after they cheated. Hmm. Yeah, they got a little involved. They'll do that. One moment, and he sort of turns his head. Yes, Bail. Yes, I know, I know what I said, Bail. 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 Hellhand, do you have Bail's sword? Bail, uh... Which one's this? He turns, but as he holds up, no, Bail, he doesn't have your sword. No, I, I don't have it either. He looks towards you and smiles. It's, he's not holding anything. Hmm. Understood. He looks back to you. Well, uh, you've definitely made enemies today. Belle is after you. He'll be coming. He's also a master of ambushes and trickery. So be careful. But this does uh, complete our deal. Everything you wished. Yes. Uh, And he looks across the court It seems that mere mortals have deprived an arch devil of his weapon. His weapon of station, in fact. How could one of us be so pathetic? I'll have him barred from my kingdom. I mean, these are... uh, Oh. Are we still mind-linked? Yeah. Uh, (laughs) Were you? Yes, I don't think you had that broken. No, okay then. Across to Leaf. Uh, Should we tell Belle... Tig wanted to tell Belle about Pit of Baby Demon flying things Got that he's not supposed to dis. have or dis the what what a player whoever oh uh, yeah good point uh, and uh kind of turns back and and says there's some other i don't know if this is a public company uh, information but uh, uh, perhaps we should uh, debrief at some point about uh, some other factors within the, the party. 
He sort of flashes you a look like he's a little displeased. Tell me here. The court should know what I know. Uh, very well. Well, uh, while investigating the castle, uh, did you know that Bell has a, a pit? He's making his own army. I will inform my lord of this immediately. I wish for you to tell his daughter. When you return home to Malbolge, find a glacier. Tell her exactly what you found. There are only a half dozen naturally forming pits, and he should not have one. Yeah, we, we thought you might feel that way. What else did you find while there? Uh... I mean, besides the sword and the pit, I'd say that's it. Okay. What was it again in the contract? What did you want? Uh, passage to Malbolge was one. Uh, oh, yes, information about your mistake with Sloan. That was something I offered, was it not? And I, I, I Leaf would just kind of turn to the others. He, well, I'm pretty sure Auric has a contract, so he's just kind of looking at Auric uh, now. Shh. I never. I yeah. I think so. I, <laughs> a you, doesn't. Remember, you have forgotten. Do you remember the the contract I have, we signed? With the, uh... Yeah, yeah. No, I know that there's a contract. I'm getting all the terms. Yeah, one part was uh, that you made a mistake with Sloane. Because, you know what it was. because uh, you guys weren't sure what you wanted from him, so he offered a couple things. Mm. Oh, sh -na 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 over to Auric. <laughs> I'm going to keep doing it because it's all. Yeah. <laughs> um, to Auric. Oh, 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 Icky, um, mm. take. I yes. had thought about um, uh, the Sloan problem, um, how Sloan is um, now uh, an equestrian because of you, um, but she doesn't, you know, but I don't know why. Um, but yeah, Tig think we made big boo-boo uh, on that and Tig need to talk to you about it because we, uh, we upset natural balance. The order of things um so we made big boo boo and tig need to explain but probably not here so, no, no, uh, uh, oh. in his head he'll be like tig i'm trying to answer the question of I just this it. well yes would you afterwards 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 and and Oric is just like this right now as he's just, <laughs> like in his head telling tig to Take yeah, a, just like I imagine, she actually went -na 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 -na, and like just made us like, <laughs> and I'm just like this, to, like, holding my fingers up towards Tig in real, real life. In, in all of your heads, you hear Tig may be right, and a smile creeps across his face as you realize that he can pretty much hear what you're saying, and he can fuck out of our head, put the thoughts in your head as well. Ooh. Slow did not have a chance to solidify her power. Tig was right! However, you still put a major dent in the horseman's plans. Yeah. They will take quite some time for a new war to arise. Possibly, you will have Sloane back in time. 
she will be war again if she can defeat Savazel. We'll see. What you killed was the physical manifestation of her spirit. Now Sloane's soul fights for control. Who's so Vasil? I say in my mind. Former Lord of the First. Former Angel of Heaven. Warlike. Did not want to deal with the bureaucracies of hell, so found something more to her liking. Constant destruction and war to end the demons and then all things. <laughs> Some of you might know her as Zariel. <sighs> Was there anything doesn't else? Doesn't sound like doesn't sound like a true manifestation of war, but I understand these things are feathery. Why not a true manifestation of war? He folds his arm like sits back into his throne, listening to you. No, I'm only to theories. Theories are all I'm talking about. Well, let's discuss theories. What know you of the workings of the cosmos, little mortal? Not enough yet. Well, put forward your theory. I'm all ears. Well, and he looks to the court does. and just says, leave us. I have a debate to have with this paltry magician. I've heard As all the sense. pit fiends are leaving, Leaf is looking at him like one at a time, like great job out there today. Shaking their heads. I'm sure a lot, yeah, I'm sure a lot got done. Uh, don't you know? This is this is just big, you know. It's, it's you know how the wheels turn. Um, Handing out five dollar Starbucks gift cards from this. Uh, <laughs> you people. see, like the uh, despite his two IC sort of stops past, and um, his name is Titulus. Or Tilitibus, I can't remember now. Um, Relation. Anyways, uh, he's a bit of a dick. <laughs> uh, but Seems like that's all these devils. I don't this think that's one's a, more that of a dick. Uh, so he stops by you, Leaf, and he's like, the master would like a word with your friend. Maybe we could get a drink? You could bring your little slaves too. As he looks across the two on their hands and knees. Oh, come, come on, on, titties. You know that I don't hold slaves. I've asked you to stop calling me that. It's yeah, degrading. I asked you to stop. Yes, it is. And I, I mean it that way. Fine, let's get our drink. Uh... And in uh, your heads, I think, take it near you, you're welcome to come. This will not be pleasant. <laughs> he, he looks across at Tig with, like, the antlers, like, this is a big one. Do you ride it? And, like, sits on her back holding <clears throat> the antlers. And I'll just, like, buck my head back to try and stab him in the chest. Make a uh, will, well, will a, a wisdom save. Can I, uh, do I hear this happening? You're currently talking with Despoidal. Uh, you can okay, make a perception okay. check if you wish. I would, because if I hear it and I have enough time, I would like to cast protection from good and evil on Tig, so she has full capacity here. I'm going to leave this up to the DM. Uh, I rolled a uh, dirty 20. Nope. nope, I didn't hear it. I didn't hear it. Uh, I rolled a 2. Uh, <laughs> you're still under the spader's presence, so like you can't really move. You sort of... Yeah. Alright, so just extremely unhappy growling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. However, he's probably going to have a really bad time when you get to the elevator. Um, yeah. I was trying I to Leaf... give you a dignified response, but I couldn't. <laughs> it's okay. He would actually take out his uh, his gun and 
point it at him uh, and just say, let's not interrupt this meeting further. Uh, he sort of looks at, what's an amazing contraption? Yeah. I, I haven't seen one of these in a long time. You know, yeah, well, if you don't want to see it on the work. Yeah, rather. that's right. Courtesy of Gale. Yeah, Gale. Gale. You should get off my back because we're supposed to leave and by sitting on Tig's back, you are disrespecting he... Dis. Cast command silence. Shunnan <laughs> <laughs> to leave. This guy's a dick. Tell him he's being rude to Dis so we can go because Tig <laughs> likes And you can all, you all leave. Uh, I, 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 he's, I, he's st- still hear all this bullshit in his head while he's trying to talk to Dis. <laughs> and he's like, shut up, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> well, what would you like to do, Neil? Uh, well, Neil was trying to stay because Neil wanted to ask Dis a question, but then it kind of jumped. So You can stay if you want. The other two can leave and you can just kind of stay there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I kind of am intent on asking this question. That's the only reason I came up here. Uh, if Nia stays, then Oric will... Will cast protection from good right. and evil on well, you. Well, just just wait a second. As the other two leave, mm-hmm. uh, and you are you are talking, you're like, uh, one moment. And he, the spader comes down and bends oh. in half, and then puts a clawed talon to your chin and lifts it up. What do you want, bruised little flower? I'm looking for someone, and was told you might know where he is. And. Due to like the the presence and force of his will and voice, like you, when he lifts you up, you just stare straight at his eyes. You can't move, and it's just like it's almost a robotic thing as you're forced to speak and make a wisdom save. And that twenty okay. might not be enough as well. I I will get you to roll um, again if you get that twenty. There there is no way I can pass that. I have nothing to boost it. That's an eight, so that is a six. I'm not even going to waste a fortune's favor on that. I oh, physically have no way to. You do also it. need to make a constitution save. Um, Con, I have a bit more of a chance for maybe. Can I? I want to make her succeed on her wisdom saving throw. I will take a point of exhaustion to to dis dis. Now, this isn't a spell. Is it's it any save? save? You asked for a save. Yeah, I know. I'm just... The only reason I'm umming and ahhing this is because... And I know it's not really in, in the rules of it, but it's like, would you know that she's, like, trying to force something through right now, or would you just kind of see it as an extension I mean, of the this past? entire state of my friend is trying to force something through. And yes, it's true. Uh, tell you what. Otherwise, Since I would they, absolutely not be doing anything. If it wasn't for the vibe that happens to them, I wouldn't have done anything. Do you more. want the wisdom save to be auto pass or the constitution oh, please, save please to be the, the wisdom, wisdom save. The wisdom okay. save. I actually have a chance with the con I'll take the con I'll take the consequences of whatever the con ends up. Okay. Being. Roll your con. But it's mostly Auric is is this is this kind of Auric being a little bit of a he knows he's weak here, but he wants to yeah. twenty seven hours possible. Still a fail. This con save is immense. What I'm looking at. <laughs> hold on, hold on. I'm seeing what I can do here. Give me one second. If I didn't already give you the convergent futures, I'd give you guidance. All right. Oh, so I don't think you can. Fuck no. Because I used my I used my favorite by the gods already. So no. So what I'll say is twenty seven doesn't fucking hit. Okay. You don't quite stand, but you have a bit more. Freedom of movement, so you can go like your knees as you look at him, as opposed to like your hands and knees with just your head up. Um, but that that look in his eye still has like tears rolling down your cheeks, but you're not like actively sobbing. It's just like you you can say the thing. It's just like your body is like rebelling against this. Um, as you take two negative levels, which I do as. Wait. Uh, you Wait, take neg one you... on all saves, attacks, damage. Pretty much anything you roll, just take neg two. Wait, wait, wait. What is this? This is the uh, con save. Okay, so how do I mark, mark that down? Just neg two on all all dice rolls, neg two. And it's like how having long an auto is this bane. Going to... I will how long let is this I will let you last? know when it lifts. 
Okay. In in one D and D, that's technically the new exhaustion rule. I know. It's I know. It's actually really good. That new exhaustion rule is way better that. than the current. I love that. I hate it so much better. I also like that you can like. I don't know if, if I just saw this in a TikTok or something else, but it's like when you go unconscious and come back to one HP, uh, you gain a level of that exhaustion. Mm. I was like, that's so good. That too. That's so good. Yeah. It's not to distract us too much, last thing, but that's what the resurrection, like normal D&D &D resurrection yeah. does when it's higher than ever. Continue. Okay. So, um... <clears throat> uh, actually, real quick note. I imagine Oryx's stav is kind of, like, vibrating somewhat as that convergent future is, like, yeah. trying to keep Nia's, like, autonomy. Yeah. And, like, Oryx is it's trying to not express that he's getting exhausted by even just letting Nia, helping let Nia not like fall to her knees completely and de be devastated. Yeah. You're in short, I won't tell you the whole thing this does, but what it's pretty much done is uh, he's imposed his will on your body, but not your soul now. Like your whole body and soul was stuck down to the floor and he's trying to like force it through some more at you because you stayed and he's trying to like overpower you and your soul has rebelled and stayed strong. However, uh he can more or less puppet you if he wishes mm -hmm. um was i still able to say what i wanted you to will say? be able to say what you want to say well what i said still stands say it again i'm looking for someone and i was told you could help me who is it the devil calls a half <laughs> half you want to find half yes I have a contract with him already didn't think he would use that again I don't believe you'd be allowed in my lord's presence Maybe, maybe Mephistopheles will conjure half for you again, though. Why? What do you want with half? I wish to change an aspect of our deal, to see something given to me given to someone else contract once written is very hard to break i figured that it wouldn't be that big of a change he offered me a clean slate i just want it given to someone else you are so naive little dragon girl i can see it now and then he looks at you and he looks back at his wife on her throne that is interesting. Who else is in there? Well, Someone half helped me take back. Let's see what we do here. Tell me what your plan is and maybe I can give a word. I will want something in return. Have you heard of the Bastard Five? <laughs> of course. I'm meant to take over for their leader. I'm supposed to kill him for half. I just want my clean slate that I was promised given to the leader when I kill him. And I'll take whatever punishment I've earned. You want the clean slate given when you kill him? I just don't want to see him in a lower plane. Why? I have my own reasons. I will send your message forward to my allies. Maybe it'll get passed to what my do you lord. Want? I know how this works. Just tell me what you want in return. Hmm. 
I'll need some time to think. Tomorrow, when the sun, well, the darkness lifts, I will send all of you to Malbolge. You'll have an answer by then. Until then, a token. And a claw flicks out and just takes one of the scales off you. Ow. Okay. Never drop your naivety. Makes you so much fun. Don't know where you're going to end up. I'm oh, interested I in seeing. I have a pretty good idea. Well, maybe we can change that. And then he stops. Ah, oh, an answer. You'll have it tomorrow. Off you go. Yeah. Yeah, we'll leave. Um, However, and she's able to. He actually looks to you, Orige. Help your friend. Oric? <laughs> You're like frozen for a moment? <laughs> no. no. Uh, Oric will uh, tap his staff and cast protection from good and evil on Nia to relieve the fear. Yeah, so you can now stand up and walk out if you wish. And Oric's body visibly uh, releases the tension of keeping Nia from being completely obliterated by this demon's, this devil's presence. I do appreciate that, sir, which is why Nia is going to subtle cast uh, Intellect Fortress on you. Ooh. Because that I'm your friend like that is a great spell. Um, you have resistance to psychic damage and have advantage on intelligence, wisdom, and charisma saving throws. Mm. As Before as you cast, <laughs> as as it like it gets cast, he's like. <laughs> it's also subtle, so it shows no. There are no somatic or verbal com That's components. Fine. That's so. fine. As you cast the spell, he still laughs, not knowing exactly what it is. But you've cast a spell in his lair, in hell. <laughs> you can feel magic. He's just going. <laughs> you think your tricks will help? I'm going to promise you something. Get out! <laughs> Auric, stay. I will be honest with you. You be honest with me. Staff. <sighs> Tell me your theories. Now, uh, you've already somewhat, uh, not <clears throat> touched upon one malleability of death for such a certain force of nature also for such a certain force of nature war desires its own demise the peace of silence death as well perhaps only the void is true in its intentions Do you know the story of the seal? I'm all ears if there's a new story. Before anything was here, this darkness, a sphere, there are many such spheres, all holding worlds and planes. Most, a seal to keep their form. That seal became the shards of divinity, new gods to form. Yes, yes, I've heard of the shards. They are light, blinding. But where there's light, there is what, Auric? An absence. When the first gods were born, so was the void. It did not like the light encroaching on it. 
And then mm, there was interesting. life. So there was death. But is there death? What is death? Death is an ending or destruction of absolution. I will quote you in my thesis. I have been here a very, very long time. One of the first, in fact, to set foot on this plane, cast out from mm. above. An ending. But what you see, what you think, is about the malleability of death, the changing from one state to another of a soul. Yes. The flesh dies, and the soul is released. But yes. you're never quite what you were without the flesh. Parts of you are lost. Strength, knowledge, power. Yes. Souls have power, but not the power of the flesh. Souls of value increased, decreased. Just as the flesh has value increased, decreased. Everything is malleable. Those that are born of the material plane, they give power to those outside. Through their souls, their worship. Sure, you understand this little godling. Of course I do. But they only give that power while there. They die, come here, and now they are ours to play with, like mud on the material plane. You can build a house. You can make things from it. But it's a tool. No longer its intended purpose. But an aspect of your use of souls includes the suffering of said soul, which implies a continued existence. I am not arguing that their life force is weakened. I'm not arguing that they are not providing to something else. All I'm arguing is that it is not an end. But it can be. Soul can only take so much before it breaks, much like a body. Once it breaks, it dissolves. Once that breaking is start, it's inevitable. So you can trade it on to be consumed by something, or you can work it until it is dust. Really, it's up to the owner of said soul. There is an ending, Oric, a nothingness. And it's in our being to fight against the nothing, rather than accept it. Maybe you're tired of things on the mortal plane and you accept the coming of death, but no one accepts the coming of oblivion, apart from the horsemen and the demons. But they are. They are what? There is a period at the end of that sentence. <laughs> I realize that. I'm not. You said Orc leans more heavily on his step and making himself look smaller, actually. You said, but they are. What do you mean by that? You talk of the sea of realities. Seals holding them in to shape. Are the horsemen outside that seal? And if they are, what is beyond that seal? My perspective, my theory is nothing. Of course, true oblivion. Horsemen are not 
ushers of total oblivion. They are ushers of mindlessness. And it is malleable. Maybe not entirely, because the seal may require shape. But, in my perspective, these horsemen have lost their, so to speak. You don't know your own histories, do you? Why the horse are well, here? From what I've been told, they're unerring forces of nature. Yet one has already made a deal with me, and another has already been half supplanted, although not fully. The horse are not intentions across of all planes. Nature. But they do feel when a new sphere awakens. The horsemen are here because they found the elves. The elves fled. The elves came here and so did the horsemen, designating it their next sphere to destroy. They don't like when prey gets away. Prey? Hmm. Curious. Your ancestors are the reason for the annihilation. Interesting, interesting perspective to blame prey, the actions of a predator, a predator who is wishing to destroy all of its prey. Would it have been better to let yourselves be destroyed? No. Than consigning untold trillions to destruction here. Sips coffee. While you consider yeah, that, right. we'll go to uh, <laughs> yeah, let's cut the others. Because we've been at this for a little bit. <clears throat> now wait it out. <laughs> <laughs> my my cleverness is not as high as orcs <laughs> mine is definitely not as high as displayed as uh so uh i'm going to get you to make a history check mike slash leaf slash fardy slash a lot of other things history history can't be religion can it <laughs> uh i'll let it be religion because it's to do with almost a god Uh, so that would be a 24. Okay. I'm going to give you some of Despater's abilities. So you kind of, like, that you figured out across the millennia. Um, he is known as the Lord of Iron. And he can, anything within 60 feet of him... Is about the the race you've seen when he's dealt with coups and other things. Uh, he can command any construct. Just he just takes control of it, regardless of who has it or what magic is is being done. He just takes control of constructs made of metal. Um, and. Within that range as well, anything that would rust, he could, it just doesn't. Like he, if someone casts a spell that's meant to, you know, disintegrate or rust or anything like that on a piece of metal, does not work. Iron within sixty feet of him is more or less impervious to being damaged or rusted or eroded. Say 27? 24. 24, okay. Uh, in that case, I'll give you another one. Uh, you know that if he locks eyes with intent with someone, he can sort of force his will on them. It weakens their body, and if they cannot shake the effects, uh it becomes a, a permanent thing. Not that he can completely control them once they're out of dis, but it does mean that on death, and you've seen this happen to people, you know, several 
layers away. They will die. And then a few moments later, their body will rise and just walk to the city of Dis to become a servant of his. Body, not soul. And lastly, uh, his voice holds so much presence that it is almost like if he wants it to, and even sometimes when he doesn't, uh, it can act just when he's giving orders and talking to people, can count as a like a dominate person or charm monster. Um, you know, you've seen people like summon hydras and stuff inside his throne room and he's just like ah get out and that just sort of like freezes turns around and leaves as if he's cast a spell but he clearly hasn't so this see like that and then that you know that immense uh sort of like spiritual oh god i'm gonna use a term i shouldn't spiritual pressure um like can feel uh, like it's like it's pushing out several miles away um that is that is his that's a few you know there's more abilities he has that are more than other like fiends but that's what you've picked up on so far and that's what has happened to your friends a lot of the time while talking to him um so you so Leaf, Nia, and Tig are now walking down the street with a eight foot tall spindly looking devil with a, uh, it, it's like a great sword, but it's as thin as a rapier on his back. He looks very physically weak, but uh, when he talks to people that you're passing by, you can see that he's just like talking rings around them, getting control of them. Um, by manipulating, insinuating, he's he's a nasty piece of work. Slimy. So what is this then? So important as to leave? What are you what are you dragging me out here for? What did you say to Bell? What did you? talk about with him uh i mean i i lied through my teeth the whole time i was there did you though cut to the chase titties what what is it what are you after <sighs> change is coming hellhand which side will you fall on now that is an interesting question walking out of Despater's throne room right now. He cannot hear what I say. He'll hear what I say. Not if I don't want him to. So. Is that so? What exactly will you do? Tell me. When the fight comes? When the fight comes. And I will do exactly what I do whenever a big fight that I don't give two shits about comes along. I will go home and I will sit in my chair and kick my feet up and watch the show. The fight will come to your home whether you like it or not. You are a general. You are a warrior. You will be dragged to a side. Well then, who's got the sweeter deal? What's pulling you away from Despater? Never said I was leaving, Despater. I want to know where we you are. We would not are. be having this conversation if you weren't thinking about it. What did they offer you? A return to the old way. As you sort of like, you watch several demons walk past, like, less filth in hell. 
starting up the blood war again. Annihilation of the demons. Not just a Attempted. war. You're allowed to cut in if you want, Nia. Are the demons not endless? But the whole point is that the abyss didn't end. Well, a funny thing happened a few hundred years ago when a one oh, a wannabe god ate a plane. Change the rules. What could you possibly gain out of the blood war starting up again? Don't feel like I need to answer that from you, little more. Just curious why you'd be so keen to be torn apart again and again. I'm not stupid. Ah, I know what that would entail. Beg to differ. I'm I'm confused because uh, uh, Bell is on the side of eliminating the abyss. What's he getting so cozy with Orcus for? Orcus is a servant of the Endless Lord more than a demon nowadays. The Endless Lord is a god of death. Orcus represents his undead legions. So, if we can halt the horsemen without the help of the demons, we shall. And how would you go about that? You ain't got any plan in terms of stopping the horsemen without the demons? I thought that was the whole, seemed like a pretty big deal that they got involved. You think there's another way? Does it have something to do with a certain room that I saw in Bell's castle? Maybe. Maybe. Huh. Have you heard from your old friend Liam lately? I heard he's looking for me. Yes. Well. I could remove him from the equation if you would pick the better side. <laughs> for a devil, you got an awful poor choice of words. Deal. You agree? <laughs> I don't know that I want him removed from the equation. I think maybe that's the punishment that I have yet to receive from getting here. And I would have thought that's exactly what you want. Maybe I'll just find that pretty wife of yours and pay her a visit, wherever she is. You're really helping me pick sides, I'll tell you that. When that war comes, and I'm on the other side of the line, who do you think's going to come out on top of that? Well... Good luck, Leaf. Don't think you're ever getting out of here. And I don't think we're going to find it fun to be on the side you're on. I'm not having okay. a whole lot of fun down here in general. I don't know if you noticed. But I'll tell you one thing. People don't give me a lot of credit, and that's usually the thing that gets them killed. Oh, I think I have your measure. A lot have. 
Maybe we get that drink in at the time. Yeah, you owe me. Uh, and he'll flick two of the black uh, scales towards you. With the drink. And he leaves. You are, I'd say, about 200 meters from uh, Gale's shop. Ah, well, uh, these might help you two more than me, and I'll just give them one of the scales each. Okay. That'll be good in... Uh, oh, oh, God, you actually bite into it? Shro? No, no, like checking that it's like a, a gold coin sort of thing, just like, hmm. Right, so do you, do you bite it? Uh. Yeah, checking that it's real. Tig's got no concept of these things, so yes. Make yeah. a wisdom save. It'd be better if I didn't <laughs> commit to that. Uh, 15. <laughs> okay, let me just look up the rules <laughs> for insanity. Please hold. Uh... You probably have to roll a d10. Is it a big insanity or a small insanity? Guys, it's a big Tink's insanity. Fucked up anyway. Uh, if anything, you're just. Big insanity table. If anything, it's just <laughs> unveiling yeah, what's just really gonna, underneath. I'm just gonna do that. You just get to actually meet Tig. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> we didn't realize there was a small filter on Tig. <laughs> it's a big filter on Tig. <laughs> All right. Uh, I have to. Yes. <laughs> Roll me a d one hundred, please. Ooh, I don't get to use those often. Which one of you is gonna like me today? Uh, let's hm. go, elf. Twenty-three. Twenty-three, and then we're gonna add twenty. Okay, you, uh, you get struck with visions of just like the entirety of hell, the souls being whipped and damned and tortured and it, it's not pleasant. I don't have the full words to describe the uh, horrors of hell. Uh, go watch lots of scary movies and come back to me. Um, but the basic thing of this is your character must compulsively perform an action such as uh either praying frantically cleaning a weapon reciting a verse and so on and pays little attention to anything else uh you take negative one penalty to all of your mental ability checks uh for the next 2d20 hours did I roll double one? You fucking what? Okay. 11 cool. hours. Yeah. Two, two, two hours. hours. Two hours. Cool. I was oh like... My God, could you imagine if it was done I that way? I was like, what the hell? 2020 hours. I was like, yeah, what I the mean, hell? Really. Like, this is, <laughs> this is bullshit. I rolled two of these. And they both rolled the little thingy up. And I was like, no. Nah. Yes. <laughs> All right. So I have to just, like... Just find something that OCD, would make you feel you fi make you feel better, in regards to the fact that all these people are suffering, and then you just do that, and yeah, that that that's you for the next little while. I dig a hole. Oh, so it's like basically unlocked Tig's morality about this. Yeah, <laughs> her, her moral relativity you gonna has been broken. Plant yourself. Yep. <laughs> oh. Okay. In the find soils of hell. Out, out the, out the <laughs> front. Uh, it doesn't matter where it is. I, I, I need to find. I, I need to dig a hole. So out the front of Gale's shop, Tig starts planting herself. Yep. I'm gonna say that. Just the next two hours takes an hour to dig a hole, deep enough for just her head to stick out of with the little antlers. Yep. Uh, and then right, you guys spend a lot of time in that shop. And then an hour just sitting there. Um. And the antlers start like cracking and leaping sappy blood. Bloody sap. Uh, because of all the, the evil and badness of the lair. Mm. Uh, 
You guys watch some of this happen. I don't know what you do. <laughs> I'm just doing like digging on like my name's tick. Do, 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 do. My name's tick. Do, 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 do. I'm gonna be honest. My name's tick. I don't do, do, do. question Tig's insanity my at this point. Tick. I'm going inside Gail's shop and I'm ignoring this. <laughs> Just, just it's that time like... she kind of did the same thing in the park. <laughs> she wasn't insane yeah. then. <laughs> yeah, no, just Nia just launches this. She's like, I, and then just goes into the shop. All right, I think Leaf would look like he's about to say something, and then when he sees Nia's reaction, he's like, well, all right. No, she, she, this isn't even the weirdest thing she's done. I met her, and she just started eating people's fingers. Okay, we're just going to leave this alone. This is the most normal thing Tig normally does. <laughs> so Gail sees you walking in near and just screams and runs. <laughs> and then when he comes back, he's got the spike in his head along with like a harness around it, which has bolted it in place. You can see screws <laughs> like there he's bleeding. And he's got two like flesh hooks in his mouth pulling back. So he's got like, it's like, you know, the like the hockey straps with like the, the oh, okay. stretchable things with the hook he's got one here yeah. and one at the back of his head dug in so he stays smiling and she's like <laughs> leaf's like come on gail you can't outsource things that you wear to the torturers just build it yourself you're a smart you don't have to do it like that. <laughs> just poison <her>. get out <laughs> oh she's fine she fixed the hole i had to do it again yeah, and now you have solved that problem with your device, which you have made. This is dramatic, Gail. That's all I'm going to say. Nia's going to, like, do a feigning bow at Leaf the Hellhand. <laughs> okay. What, what do you want here? Those items we were looking at? Oh, yes. Uh... <laughs> like, half crying, half smiling. Uh, and he hands you his morality here. He hands you a list. Uh, so the plus three armor was thirty souls, or three hundred of those black scale chips. The iron stone is twenty four souls, or two hundred forty. The cubic gate one hundred and sixty five souls, or one thousand six hundred and fifty. Wait. Yes, of those chips. Uh, the belt of fire giant strength is 100 souls. 1,000 chips. Uh, the carpet of flying, 35 souls or 350 chips. And the sword of sharpness is 3 souls. Or how many chips? No, it's just 3 souls. It's too shit to be worth chips. Chips are like well, silver or copper here. <laughs> I have a single chip. No weapon. Is that what you say to him? Did it. I have a single chip yeah. and no weapon. <laughs> I have a single chip and no weapon. Uh. He will go get his backup spike and take the chip and hand you the spike. <laughs> no. He, it's, like, it's, like a, it's like it's like it's like just a dagger. Chip back. No. <laughs> I will take the chip pack. No, and don't touch me, or I'll fix the hole again. Is there anything I can help you with this to have? Just let me know, please, please. Uh, Leaf, you don't happen to have any obsidian chips, do you? Uh, how, how like how much, how many souls would I have? Uh, I'll say because of what you do, you have that little place which makes souls feel good for a little while and they go off and people like the devil's like yes he's make he's like building them up only to crush them harder uh you'll get a tithe of like a few chips for every soul that passes through you've probably got you know uh let's say 750 chips a chip is earned as we said before by a soul going to like the mines to mine it and it takes roughly a year for a soul to mine a single chip so what you do is you take a soul to the the bank effectively and be like, I'm giving this in. And then they give you a, they give you however many chips and that soul stays there for that many years. Okay. Uh, so could I, could I spot them their wish list? 
the 750 chips, you could get them some of this stuff. Uh, you could get the armor and the flying carpet. Uh, yeah. That'd be the two you could get. Or the armor and the iron stone. Or the iron stone and the carpet. I mean, gotta get the carpet, right? I feel like the armor and the carpet oh, is probably the most valuable what? thing. The iron stone just lets you live without eating and sleeping and drinking. Mm -hmm. um, That's just really efficient for Auric. I Truthfully, Auric just wants it for efficiency reasons. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so he okay. can stay up and, and not yeah. and have to worry. And also, if he like falls in a hole, he won't just die of starvation. Yeah, um, or you know, have to wait upside down him. again, you know. <laughs> um, yep, yep. Actually, I'm pretty sure what I put on my longsword actually overcomes my magic issue because hex weapons and pack weapons are considered magical yeah, for the yeah. purpose of overcoming resistance. So, yeah, well, I can probably get that sort of sharp, sort sort of sharpness too, right? With that, yeah, I'd say you probably weapon. have, you've probably at this point like pocketed a few souls of like people. You're like, oh, there's just no redeeming you. You are straight fucked, buddy. Um. <laughs> You ate your mom. You're fucked up. Oh, he's yeah, he's actually like a nice thing? guy down here. Um, <laughs> I don't like him. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the I say if you want to, you I, I'll let you. I'll say you more or less get cleaned out, but you can have the sword of sharpness, the armor, and the flying carpet, and you'll be left with a hundred chips. Okay, that's it. That it's is what I'll do. Yeah. Uh, oh. Um, Gail, I'm going to ignore that scream you did when we came in. I'm just going to pretend you were smiling the whole time. And here we are at full rate because of this. And he holds up the gun and he's like, you really outdid yourself with this. Have, have, have you spent time with it? Have you... Have you... Uh, attuned to it and pray to it and let it be a part of you yet? I uh, took it out of the holster and pointed it at something and pulled the trigger. But it has so more I, to... I feel like we know each other in the biblical sense. It has I mean? more to give. And he sort of like gets very like excited at it. And Leaf like does not trust that look of excitement from Gale and is like sliding the chips over <laughs> and just like looking at him kind of yeah. distrustingly it's a, it's a it's this very magical weapon you could get more power more accuracy well I will uh, take that into consideration I'll uh, I mean you're cleaning me out here pretty good but with whatever I have left I'll take it out to a nice dinner we'll sit down we'll get to know one another and I'll tell you though, I've had a conversation recently that has got me wanting to use it very badly you just sort of like nods and nods and nods uh and and he will um more or less like bag up the the stuff and you know pass it across to you uh he actually places it in like this sort of backpack and you see it just kind of like as he puts it in the item just goes and disappears like into the backpack uh like the the, the 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 sword of sharpness just straight into a backpack no bigger than this um folds leather armor in it goes as well just magic um is it backpack. just so i know is it leather is it uh normal leather or studded leather this plus three studded i'm gonna be studded for you oh you're the best thank you you won't like it when you put it on but studded excuse me no, don't worry about it the studs are backwards. They're on the inside. It's very <laughs> uncomfortable. Are you kidding? Man, I, I I had to evade like madness for, or not madness, despair for like 25 hours in like a tiny space. I can deal with this. Okay. So. Uh, are we okay with a short break and then back to Auric? Yeah. yeah. I'm pretty much going to say that Auric stays there until the next day you guys show up to be like time to go to Malbosh and he's still just like and death is 
But uh, and furthermore, the malleability of cosmic virtue one, is going to long, determine all of our. As long as I get to see people walk yeah. past Tegan as a plant in the ground, I'm good. Yep. Just one more bookkeeping question because I'm just keeping track. Is this yes. a long sword of sharpness? Uh, is whatever I said last week, and I believe it was a short sword. That had... does not exist. <laughs> Who cares? I can say what I want. <laughs> I just need to know for what item I'm adding to my sheet, man. Uh, yeah, because it was a it had to be a finesse weapon. So yeah, that's right, that's right. Yeah. That's why we said uh, short sword last week is because it was yeah. Because you're like, oh, sure is it a finesse? finesse? And I was like, yeah, yeah, it's a short one, little one. Are you sure? Why not a, a scimitar then? Because that's also finesse. Same damage. Okay, I'm we'll just do with that. That's fine. That's whatever. <laughs> I just don't want to make a custom item. I have the pain in the ass to do in D&D Beyond. Oh, I, have, I have changed my mind. Make a custom item. And we're going to go for the break now. We'll see you all in a bit. Okay. See you soon. See you soon. Press Bye. the button, me. Priest. Welcome back to Roll for Damage, uh, a lovely channel of nerdy D&D fun. My name is Sean. I am playing Auric, and I'm going to tell you what just happened over the last hour and a half. So we talked to uh, Dispater. A real cool dude, some might say. Others might say a terrible dude. Um, but that getting to Oryx's laws of malleability of virtue. But anyway, um, we learned that Slo we we messed up in Sloane's um, uh, in capturing Sloane in the spell, um, and that there is some issues, and there is the sh sort of her soul and War's essence are fighting at this point, basically for control but there is going to be some imbalances that are created by that um nia uh had a conversation with with uh dissipator about looking for the uh devil half um who we have met before and all most of us at least have made deals with who is uh, some sort of devil entity that is somewhat a manifestation of some of our qualities but really thoroughly connected in an old being that is just taken on this form um <clears throat> that has a link to Mephistopheles as well, as well as Asmodeus, of course. Um, Nia asks about this because she wants to transfer her deal to someone new because she was given a clean slate on her soul in exchange for our services. She wants to transfer that to, um, if I remember correctly, um, to the leader of the Bastard Five upon killing him, um, which, you know, Auric uh, was immediately like, what? Uh, but that's for a later time. <laughs> Um, and then Oric engaged in a debate with Dispater, less of a debate and more of a moral discussion uh, about existence, because we weren't really debating necessarily as much as we were tit for tat in a, in a discussion uh, that Sean likes to have in real life, uh, <laughs> but also in fantasy settings. Um, <laughs> while Leaf was learning about some of, uh, um, of Dispater's powers, um, but also talking to good old titties, uh, a really uh, a real asshole amongst devils. Um, who wants to restart the blood war because uh, he doesn't like demons and he doesn't think that the devils need the demons to stave off the horsemen. Uh, and Leaf was like, <laughs> you're a dick, titties. Uh, we'll see what happens. Um, but I'll take that deal. <laughs> uh, and then uh, they went in to discuss with Gale uh, while Tig suffered some insanity uh, due to the suffering happening all around and started digging a, a comfort hole um, while singing her comfort song. Um, and uh, inside we acquired some dope armor for Nia, a dope magic carpet for me and anyone to use really. Um, just to add to that, it's a five by ten foot carpet, so yes. you can fit two people on it. Two riders. Two riders. Two riders on it. Uh, I mostly originally wanted it just as the, for the convenience of a uh, flying carpet, but then uh, Nova put into my head the idea of Oric flying up in the sky and raining chaos upon the, the peoples uh, of the battlefield, and that is just too juicy to, to deny. Um, plus, realistically, it could actually just be me and Leaf up on there with Leaf firing off um, <laughs> guns and crossbows and <laughs> and stuff. And just, we're basically would be a mobile fortress. Because um, uh, I'll also put us in a ball of all of force uh, and just like open a little hole every now and then. And pew, 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 pew. Um, <laughs> but that's a, that's just a fantasy of mine. Um, <laughs> Weird kink. 
Oh, keep going. <laughs> Raining <laughs> hellfire upon the battlefield. <laughs> um, but uh, now we are returning to Oric as he is uh, a couple hours later continuing this conversation with Dispater, um, which I will. <laughs> is Oric here? Uh, can, can we see? <laughs> He's in the room with me. He's right there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't actually know what I'm doing. There's just a, a guy there telling me what to do named Oric. <laughs> now, Oric would, uh, um, uh, you know, really be leaning on his staff right now as he looks up at Dispater and I imagine smirking at whatever clever comment he just made. Um, as he would say, <clears throat> I suppose all this pontification is getting into the real question in hand of war. So, in essence, the Vesa was Ariel's fighting for control of the embodiment within slums. All right. Wrong or right? How does this affect the, as I called it before, unerring nature? You're talking of the greater war in the sense of what it is or the being of war. The being. Greater war. War is born of war. And not concerned with the wars of mortals. Those will continue, of course. But how could it not be war concerned with the wars of mortal? It is that is what it is? It is the wars of everything. You think too small? No, I don't think too small. My question is about the essence of war. If there is a conflict within a physical embodiment. What is of that being? Sequestered body. And Cerveza escaped that sequestering. It is bad way. Where is Cerveza? I suppose is the real question. Where is the mm. essence? Displaced amongst the combatants of the multiverse? <laughs> Have you dabbled in alchemy and chemistry? Somewhat. Not my favorite science, but a valuable one. When you mix two compounds, they change color. You've done this before. Yes? Yes. Of course. Let's say you have a compound which burns and melts things. Red. <clears throat> this is war. It is exactly what you worried about having control. Highly reactive compound. And the other is more or less inert. It can dilute other things. It can wash away. Yes. That is your friend. Slow. can't get the voice back in my head but whatever we're gonna keep going you're doing great thank you <laughs> as you <laughs> as one gains strength of the other the shift becoming destroyer or a bar but still that cup which you have placed your compounds in is hidden Regardless yes. of which one takes control. The thing is, Sloane, even with the help of her little war god, is just a mortal. And the war god, closer to war than it is Sloane, will be consumed eventually.
So, it's not really a question of will she break out, but more a question of when the time comes, who will it be? Sloan can fight, but not indefinitely. War is not breaking out of there, not returning to abandon her home. Every time Sloane wins, she gets weaker. But war is reborn its strength and will fight her again and again and again. And she only needs to win once. I thank you for confirming my hypothesis. So, having seen some things, I believe you have approximately a year material time. A year. <clears throat> After that, who knows? If you take more than a year to raise TM, you'll need to fetch, of course, the two heads we have here. Do you remember where I said they were? Yes, it was in my notes. One is in my Bosch. The other is Mephistopheles' pet. Green and red. Malbolge is ruled by Glacia, the daughter of my lord. Yes. But where her charms? They are irresistible to most. I think the young leaf was smitten for it. Against his will, I might add, you can't help but fall for it. She traded the green head, and it now falls to a rather unpleasant bean. Known as Moloch. Former ruler of the sixth level, layer of hell, and a <laughs> fierce, raging warrior. He is another of the original to be cast down here. Do you remember much of your time in the Celestial Plane? Yes. Why? Call it a bookmark for a future discussion. If you wish to know more, you should seek the writings of Tabrio. He wrote two books. The Book of the Damned, which was cut into three sections and cast across the multiverse, of which Leaf has one, giving him considerable power here. No one has been able to find it to take it from him, so I believe giving it into the libraries of Mephistopheles would get you quite the boon, even if it was just to let that creature transcribe the book. Who 
The other book, Tabriel wrote, was the gift of the righteous. Together, they explain the entirety of the multiverse, the heavens, the celestial planes, those above, everything below <coughs> and in between. Well, my fate is law, so I suppose it is a good thing to read up on. Exactly. I anticipate many more conversations to space. I survive. I do recommend talking to the Hellhand. He knows things from the book written about times from before I existed. Most curious. Most curious about that as well, but again, another bookmark. When you were about, when you were born. And what birthed you. I'm feeling generous. When you finish your treaties. Give me a copy. In return, as opposed to going to that <laughs> inn that you're staying at, I may spend the night perusing my archives. Comfortable chairs, servants, whatever you need. One night. One night of a devil's knowledge. Knowledge is power, but it can also corrupt. I am interested to see if you have the strength to shoulder that knowledge. It's a win-win for me. I get the treaties if you make it through intact. If you don't, just become another devil. Hmm. Curious exchange. I would. I would amend. Red end this agreement. Oh, really? Tell me why and what you need. Well, what you will receive from me in the long term is of greater value. Though it is unlikely to come to re reality. If it does. So I get one night here. You eventually get my knowledge of my treaties. Upon completion of those treaties, perhaps I would quest free passage in your realms. Free passage is... Mm. Between stack 413 and 414 is a small space on the floor. There's a teleportation circle there. When you are in hell, it is yours to use. How about that? An exchange I'm amenable to. And Oric you... leans on his staff and holds a, a hand out. And he shakes and he smiles and says, You'll find I'm the most straightforward of all the devils here. I'm less interested in tricking packs that damn your soul, and more interested in perfectly ordered civilization, perfectly ordered Cosmo. You seem to want to do something that will help bring order. So. Yes. This is why I'm generous with you. Do not disappoint me, Auric. Oh, trust me, if I've disappointed you, then I've already disappointed myself a hundred times over and deserve the torment that would come. 
Well, the night is wearing on. I have a wife to deal with. <clears throat> then I bid you good night. I like that the two girls just were like, whoa, that sounded horrible. What does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> on a, a no man too we all know no. or, 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 yeah. sucks. <laughs> yeah no uh that's gross what's well, gross you, don't, you don't even know what he's meant by that moving you're just on. like mm. um but yes um as he leaves the the wife also stands up and just ignites into fire with like flaming wings and uh, seems to be, you're not even sure, a fire elemental or something? You, you, you don't know. Um, but yeah, uh, she bows, he bows. Off you go. Into some weird shit. Got it. Yeah, get out of there, man. It's going to change your life. Get out of there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, guess I imagine there's like just guy. a vibe that happens as soon as they, they're together and Orc's like, oh, oh no, 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 no. <laughs> get to the elevator. Or just spider. I mean, it shouldn't burn like that, I'm sure. But... He, likes uh, he goes to Gale for some, <laughs> for some burn creams. Um. Anyways, moving on from this. Uh... So you get to peruse the, the stacks. Um, just have a think about maybe two or three things you'd like to uh, look for specifically, and I will like just find something for you to, to, to learn from it. Uh, and then as for the others... Um, I had you... a conversation I wanted to have with Leaf, if it was possible. Yes. Do you want to be attuning to your armor as well? Like, what are you, what are you going to do about that? Yeah, uh, I think she'll attune to the armor probably uh, in the morning when we're getting ready because it seems like the proper time when she's getting it on to. Okay, that's what you want to do. I don't like that, Kyle. <laughs> Wait, I, I, this has been overnight. We left the. Yeah, so I, I, I'm gonna. Okay. Yeah, so you pretty much you no walk problem. out the shop and you can see you can see Tig down there and like she's like grown roots from her face into the ground, like her tongue and her chin, you know, into the ground here. And then as she sort of comes to, like they'll snap off as she like climbs up and like reverts back to normal. She's like, eh, "What the fuck? Ground bad, yeah, ground bad." Where exactly is the hole that you left? Is it just like right in front of the front step? Yeah, uh, off and to the left. Cool. I'm not. I'm not saying yeah. this shit. Yeah, thing like about a 3D that to support, Gail. like a 3D print coming up at supports. Yeah. yeah. I'm just like... Tig was about to say, "Feed me, Simo," but I don't know why. It's okay. We go now. Uh, ground bad. Ground very, very bad. <laughs> yeah, we're here. Gonna go. Uh. Gail can figure out what to do about the hole. I don't care. Um, <laughs> yeah, Gail. Um, and I was hoping to have this conversation with Leaf back at the inn, if it's possible. That's right. Mostly because I don't want back people to hear us. Yeah. Uh, I imagine as we're all like sitting down, getting ready to deal with whatever this evening is going to be, uh, Nia is going to look at uh, Leaf and ask, Did you encounter much more of the Bastard Five while you were still upstairs? Uh, I mean, what, what do you mean much more? I know two of them are dead. Yeah. Were you one of, did you have something to do with those two dying? Despair and madness. You didn't kill Madness, too? I don't think I... We didn't kill Madness. You gotta make a history check, Leaf. Pretty sure this is in your the notes I sent you. If I can find them, I'll pin them. Uh, 17. 17. Uh, oh. Uh, not 
in the notes I sent you. Cool. So, uh, yes, the uh, you you went through the portal at the end of the season where you where you kind of like left and before you came back. Um, you did kill madness though, or the person that like summons madness. Um, and that obviously dropped out madness. Um. And then there was a battle in front of the uh, castle or the, the, the city of Echelon, um, where uh, yourself, Relia, and Saros took part. And Relia managed to knock Despair down. There's big like magical duel, which is probably scary to watch. And then Saros kind of just beat the shit out of her with a media hammer. <laughs> just. Okay. Stay down, stay down, <laughs> stay down, crush. Uh, yeah. In true Sarah's fashion. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think like at the end, Leaf has kind of kicked back into that big iron throne again, uh, and is like sitting there trying to get a short rest in uh, as he talks. But uh, he'd say, "I mean, it was more Saros than me, but I was there." Thanks. Um, do you didn't happen to catch a lead on what they were doing before? I know it was a long time ago for you. I'm sorry to ask. This is kind of important. Uh, I mean, I was mostly trying to deal with the fact that they were trying to take Saros, turn him into pain. All the trials and tribulations that went there with. Kyle, did Nia know that Saros was marked by pain? Uh, I, I believe so. Was... I think did we think he did, that? yeah. Yeah. Told her. Okay. Okay. Do you know what they do you know what they mean? Did they ever tell you what they mean when they mark you, when one chooses you? Oh, they did not tell me much, the five, anyway. They more tried to kill me at every opportunity. There wasn't a lot of talking, you know? There was a lot of running and screaming and fighting and bleeding. Yeah, there, there's a lot of that, but if you, I don't know. Maybe I'm just a special case, but I got a lot of explanation when I asked questions. You ask questions? They let you ask questions? I went on my own. Yeah, Sam I, gave I wasn't going to do that. That's... He came to me and he gave me a choice when all of you got arrested. I didn't have any... I didn't know what hap happened to any of you. Tamel wouldn't tell me anything. I didn't even know you'd been arrested. I just woke up and all my friends were gone. There was nothing. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, we also didn't have much say, obviously, I, being arrested. I know, I know that now. Then I didn't. I just thought my friends had up and disappeared. But then Sam showed up. And that's when I began to learn what he wanted. Sam wants me to be the next leader of the Bastard Five. He and I, I'm sorry, I heard this kind of slipped in, but Sloan is war now? Or gonna be war? Yeah, so got... okay, Sloan and you, Sloan has gone off the fucking handle with that fucking sword, because it has a god of war in it, apparently, and a layer of the abyss compressed into it. She sold her soul to it, uh, has now become an avatar of war, and then absorbed the, the soul of war's physical form, and then we held her in stasis. I don't fucking know what Sloane's doing. It seems like every decision she's making is making her worse. 
well, I mean, she's going to be war, and then you're going to be the leader, and Saros will be pain, and we'll have majority oh, vote at the board meetings. Um, you know what I mean? We'll be able um, to do. Leave, leave. What are the other ones? Which one am I going to be? Nobody's right, so... recruiting me. They're just trying no. to turn me into dust. Everybody else getting job offers. I would love to get you out of here, but there is something you need to know about Saros. <laughs> I don't think Nia was ever told to be quiet about this because Nia was Sabrath when this went down. So, uh. Saras is dead. Oh. Did the five get him? That must have been a hell of a fight. Why isn't he here? No. Did I miss that's, him? That's not what. <laughs> that's not. I don't know what came over him, but he finally came for Auric, and he wasn't himself. Uh. He was something. It wasn't like what we always knew was going to happen. What did you always know was going to happen? I'm not dumb. I could see those two. I could see Oric was going further and further into something that Saris's God hates. I'm not an idiot. I always kind of expected it, but we didn't expect it at the time. I'm not sure that was really Savras. Sorry, Saris. Nia said the right thing, not Shelby. Uh, I'm not sure that was really Saris. I've never seen him look like that. I've known him for quite some time. That sounds the most like Saros that bleeding black from his eyes. All right, well that's something. new for sure. <laughs> I don't so, think Nia knows about the other portion of this, so uh, yeah, I don't think she knows what Oric did with with Saros, so. Well, as somebody who has spent this much time in hell, uh, don't tell Auric I said this because he'll lose it about his theories or whatever, but death ain't the end. I can get him back, I'm sure. I swear, if he's dead, he's got to be down here. There is no way he changed himself that much to not end up in one of these pits. He must be deeper than even I've gone. I don't know. Honestly, when he showed up, he threw me and Sloane into madness. And frankly, I didn't know fully what was going on until the end. And I saw the carnage. But I also know you two were close and I thought you deserve to know. I appreciate it. Uh, It's a shame. Yeah. Yeah, it God is. God damn, it's a shame. I would have loved to see it. Two of them? Oh, man. That must have been something else. You were in madness, you don't remember it? That's the biggest crime. God, I would have loved to see that. I'm glad I don't remember it. That was two people that I considered as close as family killing each other. I don't, I don't regret not seeing it for a minute. At this point, <clears throat> I'm going to say that it's uh, quite late and you kind of hear the equivalent of a, of a bell telling, you know, the time. And you know, that you probably only got a few more minutes before uh, you should probably get to sleep or you're not going to get a full chance to recover for the morning. Yeah. Sorry to end that on that bomb being dropped. No, no, I mean, uh, thank you for telling me. I... Of course. And uh, I don't know what's going to happen when all of this is over, but 
I'm going to try and get you out of here. You don't deserve to be here. I don't care what you're about to say. I don't think you do. Hey, uh, take your best shot. <laughs> and Nia is going to go to bed. Good lord, music. Yeah, I know. Just like, Nia's going to bed. Dun -dun. Um, and I get, what are you doing to me, music? Why? Uh, by the way, Mike sent you a message on Discord. Um, just as you see her leaving, uh, in case that changes anything you want to do. Um, this is from the start of the conversation. I sent that, but it's all right. Um, uh, anyways, uh, so you can do that what you will, but we'll say that the night passes without too much incident. Uh, Auric, give me two topics that you would have spent the night trying to research. Uh, let's see. I would be researching the nature of exploitation of souls. Uh -huh. uh, uh, particularly looking into the aspects of suffering and how it relates to soul output. Okay. Uh, yep, yep, yep. Uh, and then the other thing I would research would be uh, Malik. Okay. Um, I'll give you a very quick breakdown of this. Um, Wait, I take that back. Yep. Uh, I would be researching uh, Zario. Okay. Uh... Zariel one I'll have to give you a bit later because I had something for Moloch ready to go, but Zariel that's is different. Mm. So I'll I'll send that to you uh probably after game and you can be like, oh I know this shit now. Um because it's pretty standard D D stuff that she was the ruler of the first layer. She mm -hmm. uh was an angel that came to fight the demons, and then she's like, Ah heavens, you're not doing enough. And they're like, Well, too bad, fellow orders. And she's like, no. And she went to hell and started kicking ass with a bunch of angels. And then uh, Bell done fucked up. And his motives was like, no, get out of here. You're not good. I don't like it. And he's like, hey, Zara, you swing swing swords pretty swell. Wanna wanna join our team? And she's like, can I kill demons? Like, yeah, all the time. So she's like, ah, oh, cool. And she's killed demons and then some of the troops started to not be as crazy as her and she's like oh, i want to war and kill and stuff and then um uh she eventually tried something something they're not sure came to like her to uh recruit her they think but it ended up with that thing dead and her being like to abaddon where she made a home, um, which is a uh, thing called the Cinder Furnace, and it's not not nice. And now she just wanders the cosmos, starting wars, getting into wars, killing stuff. She's very scary. That's that's all I can give you right now. I hope that's enough. No problem. No, it's totally enough. Um, I was expecting anything right now. I was expecting just to get, tell you what I wanted and get something later. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he has a couple scrolls which are like treaties on uh the nature of law hierarchical civilization and how to uh how good emotions kind of get capped out but negative emotions can be like adjusted like a wave and he like, kind of like has like mathematical wavelengths and stuff and how yes. those waves can yes. be taken in by very powerful magical contraptions and be used to feed the city of dis and that's what he's got right now so that's why they like torture souls feed the city city it. that's why the city's constantly it. growing and overlapping things it's mm -hmm. it's a bit more organic yeah. iron now if i want some i want some illustrations i want some illustrations when you send the rest of this <laughs> when you send anything else to me <laughs> of, of the wavelength. i'm just length i'm just gonna, I'm just What's gonna... The, the wavelength of soul suffering <laughs> uh i'm just gonna go to work take a photo of the like yeah low resistance <laughs> Uh, ohm like meter and it's just like, whoop, whoop, whoop. like photo sent to you this but souls 
and pain. <laughs> oh, and then I'll take it. <laughs> and uh, by the end of this campaign, I'm gonna. I want to actually have Oryx treatise on all written yeah. out with illustrations in it. <laughs> all right. So that's what you you've got. Um, and I will let you if you can think of any time where you're doing something. You're like, ah, oh, this sounds similar enough to X that I could mm -hmm. maybe get advantage on a check. That's what you can use this knowledge for. Cool. 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 All right. Cool. Perfect. So just yeah. Cool. Uh, right. In the morning, you don the armor. Yep. Cool. What what happens? What debuff hits me this time? So you put on the armor. Uh, how many hit points yet? Uh, I managed to get all the way up to 133 again, but I spent every single one of my hit dice. Okay. Put on the armor. <laughs> As the studs rivet themselves into your body, ah. uh, you cannot take this armor off. Ever. You would have to cut the leather off and then cut the flesh out around the rivets to take the whole thing out. Um, it is more or less immune to being destroyed though. So like while you can cut through it and get stabbed, it will self-repair because it takes on your God. body's healing properties. I'm going to fucking kill Gale. That's all you hear after you I mean, like, look, you're like, I want that armor. This hell armor with all this spiky bits sticking out of it? Yeah, cool, uh -huh. that's my armor. In the armor. shop that you made it sound. No, 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 hold on, hold on. We need context here. The shop we were in, you went all up about how these are like objects from across the multiverse and shit, so fuck that. I'm going to kick Kale's ass. Can't all wait right. to see what this magic carpet does. <laughs> it's just a mimic. Yes. Yeah, that's Nia, what I was thinking in my head. It just wraps around you. Just that's it. Nia comes <laughs> out of wherever the heck she was getting dressed. Like you take ten d six damage. Different studs. Excuse me. Oof. Oof. Uh, Eighteen. Thirty. Thirty three points of damage. Wow, you're really making me fight for this fucking high IC, aren't you? <laughs> yes. Uh, uh huh. Yeah, it'll be worth it. The yeah, carpet. Uh -huh. well, worth it. The carpet. Um, yeah. I'll I'll give you what it does now. Um, it has a neat little function where there's like a pattern on it, and in the center is like a cloud symbol. If you stamp down really hard on that, it sort of like transmogrifies itself into like a cloud. So you like it looks like you're standing on a on a cloud. Um, yeah. Which Is means that you <laughs> get out. Um, <laughs> which means, asshole, if you go high enough, uh, you'll get advantage on stealth checks if you're in the clouds because you'll just blend in. Oh, there was a reason for it. It's a very good feature. <laughs> uh, so, Goku, where to next? Uh, <laughs> anyways, yeah. if I'm you are... I'm casting um, wounds on myself. Yeah, go for it. Uh, if you, at the, at the start of every day, uh, you need to make an opposed check with it to, like, maintain your control over it because it is semi-sentient. Um, so. I want to talk to it. I'm friends it's it. not that it really think of it more like uh dr strange's cloak right mm. except a little bit of a dick so well i guess his cloak dr. is a bit of a dick. Is kind of a dick yeah so like <laughs> if it if you manage to keep control of it you might be able to be like and it will just come to you yeah. but if cool. if you don't maintain control of it you might be like yeah and fly oh fuck <laughs> it's like yeah that, you know yeah. get it's off moody. Me. it's moody yeah <laughs> wait you uh, said this... it was the armor where... Did we get a description of what the armor looks like? Why? No. Well, because I'd like to know for when I have to do my part, my my character artwork, what I now look like. So it's what more. The it looks. It, it oh, looks yeah. pretty much like regular studded leather, but the studs like kind of look like they're stuck out just a little bit. But it's leather. Yeah. Okay. 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 That's what. Yeah. Okay. And then. So, and then, uh, it's just that then they get yeah, like, whoop in, into it to, to yeah. stud Never. you. <laughs> And how much, how, how deeply have they studded into my skin? Kind of extend a bit. They're a good, like, two inches in you. Cool. 
Yeah, like, Mia comes out bleeding, healing herself. Like, I'm going to fucking kill Gale. They don't like... I don't they, care if he can't die again. I'm going to fucking kill Gale. If they pierce your heart and stuff, they don't kill you. What they do is just, like, combine with your bodily okay. functions. So, they are oh, now... I it's guess... not part of you. That's why, it, like, it heals as well. When you heal, it oh. heals. That's fine. Mia didn't want kids anyway. It's fine. Why? Sure. <laughs> uh... <laughs> She gives you birth to a little studded, baby studded leather. You just studded <laughs> me completely. I'm pretty sure all my organs aren't going to work anymore. Thanks. They for will that. still work, as I said. It's your regular body mm -hmm. functions it just blends in. Anyways, yeah, if you just have a kid, they will have studded armor on them when they're born, or just no, be a little no. racer. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> born You're more like... armor than person now. Yeah. So, so just, we got just the armor and the carpet. Yep. Okay, cool. So you well, get. Well, no, I have the sword, sword of sharpness. Sword. But oh, yeah, the I'm not sword. sure I want it anymore. Uh, yeah, do you attune, you attune to that, I assume? I don't think that's an attunement item. Ah, uh, whatever. You spend time with it, and it's a sword of sharpness, that's all. All right, so. It is actually an attunement item. Uh, is it? Yeah. Well, fuck, I have to attune to it. So, what curse do I get, sir? I just told you it's just he a sword just of sharpness. Said. Um, You're fine. Yeah, so, so, you well, go so to. Souls, they, didn't, they didn't even spend time cursing. You go to <laughs> the Spater. He welcomes you in. And he just looks at you, yeah, and smiles like, ah, Gale's armor, I see. Looks good on you. I'm going to break his neck. Uh, all of you make. Wisdom saves again, apart from uh, Leaf. I will give. Uh, I, I'm going to give you guys uh, re rolls. Don't. Uh, I'm also going to give Tig guidance. To... Oh, I'm God, gonna... That's still not going to help. You got to re roll on guidance. Let's go for it. Um, um, so. <gasps> maybe, 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 maybe. I'm going to be using my uh, whatchamacallit. Um, gods. Favor by the gods. Favored yep. by the gods. I can get a plus I eight. Fail. Yeah, go. <gasps> what is what is eighteen plus eight? Twenty six. Twenty six. Twenty six. Please. It's the same thing I got actually. I think. Congratulations, you've met the DC. Oh my fucking god. So, you uh, get in there, and he's like, and he holds a hand up and he opens a gate to Malbolge, as I promise. But, here. Oh, wait. Mephistopheles, why is you interesting? He's been trying to learn the customs of other creatures, not what he is. He was always interested in why I took a bride. He's interested in one of his own. Think on uh. that as you continue on your journey. Oh, she got hit on. Bucker needs to take her out first, at least. That's hot. <laughs> <laughs> and then he just like holds a hand up so you guys can go through the portal. Unless there's anything else you have to talk about. How would I uh, contact him? Go to his home. Um, so, is anything, it, did Tig make any deal? Or can Tig just go now and have participation award? <laughs> yeah, just, 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 just go, Tig. What? What about my free ice cream? All right. I need this ice cream. is her tenth time to hell. Mm. Her third time to hell. Mm. And generally, on Kenya. No, sorry. Um, Stygia or Nessus for ice? I think. Stygia or Nessus. You hear that, Tig? That's where we'll find your ice cream. Okay. Piggy Nexus ice cream. Let's go. All right. Let's start going. <laughs> <laughs> New mission unlocked. <laughs> you also got the achievement of confused despair. 
Um, yes. Yes. <laughs> That's all you wanted out of this was just to confuse a fucking arch devil. Yes. <laughs> so as you step through the gate to the plane slash layer of Malvolge, the sixth layer of hell, you've skipped a few. This is an unpleasant place. Stinking clouds of vapor rise from the depths of crevices and cracks in the ground and light the sky the color of blood. Uh, you feel heat rising up and the ground seems to move every now and again, like the whole layer just like shifts a bit. You give me an intelligence check, people that are smart. This Okay. Oh, okay. I'm here for moral support. 24. Uh, did you give us a crack, Leaf? Uh, yeah, I got a 14. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, Oric, you think this whole layer might be resting on a sea of lava? The floor is lava. <laughs> <laughs> Almost, <laughs> yes. Um, oh, I used to play that. I used the to play that when I was a kid all the time. I used to play that the, when I was a kid all the time. It's easy, just don't touch the floor. <laughs> the ground is very hot to the touch, mm -hmm. to your feet. Uh, if you have any like draping cloaks on the ground, they ignite. So your shoes will be fine, but. Yeah, anything flammable tends to light up. I'm just hopping from one foot to the next, like a kid <laughs> that really needs to go pee. I'm Wait. Like, Tread I... carefully. The earth here may not be. <gasps> Wait, I can make this last for. I can make this last for an hour. Can I use prestidigitation to cool? Uh, yep. Um, takes feet. Yep. Here, here. Uh, she's like gonna cast frostbite on her feet. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just encasing her feet in ice. A, with the whole place is also on an angle. Steep <laughs> so running down. The ice block feet start to... So. <laughs> <laughs> Nia tries to grab her Directly just starts sliding in her. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways. Just trying uh, to help. There's, it's a steep, infinitely craggy, just incline. Um, and there's these sort of obsidian spires or and, and, and granite every now and again one is especially sturdy of adamantine uh, and you'll see a lot of copper um, castles and on these that, that blood red cloudy sky lightning bolts will hit the copper and just like sort of around it for a moment before dissipating you can see at the bottom of this place kind of goes down and there's a pillar going up there is a massive like rib cage and then it goes up to a skull and that seems to be a castle of sorts the pillars and spires that rise up out of the earth are like they plateau out at the top and that top is usually the size of a city they are huge some would mm. be almost the size of countries or continents it just you can see that these things every now and again they like shift and slide so some have like come together to make a bit of a multi-tiered you know continent as the gate disappears you sort of hear this faint rumbling sound. Distance. Not quite sure what it is until a few pebbles past you. I'm going to start running downhill. That's a very good call. Uh, can go. I roll for temperament of carpet? Uh, sure. Temperament of carpet. What do I roll for that? Just a d20? I like that. <laughs> carpet yeah. temperament for today? Uh, it's going to be an opposed... I can't remember if it was charisma or wisdom. Uh, choose one of those two and roll them. Charisma. 
No, just Jesus Christ. <laughs> Not good. <laughs> By the looks of things. What'd you get? Nine. I rolled a three, so congratulations. Oh. Uh, we're both petty this morning, and we're petty together. <laughs> two of you can jump on the... Like, he, he just jumps on his like, uh, go! Yeah, I just reach a hand out for whoever is like I, the slowest, yep. basically. Well, or I'm not fit. the slowest, but I don't want to die, so... Oh, so you don't leave your friends to die. Okay, so <laughs> you two jump on and start running. Uh, flying, I should say, and Tig is just liking it. And Leaf, you have been here before. And the sound of the tick, 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 you're like, oh, time to go. Uh, yeah. So you can just you'll be bolting as well. Uh, people on the carpet as chunks of just granite like start rolling down, hitting the earth, bouncing into the sky. Uh, sure, you're flying this thing. I want you to make a dexterity saving throw to start wheeling through the oh, sky shit. on this thing. Like Aladdin in the oh the caves. Yep, temple. Yep. I, I can't help him with this at all, can I? You can hold on tight, not fall off. Fuck. Okay. Oh not not bad at all, actually. Um twenty one. Nice. Yep, so I, I imagine this is yeah, literally the uh the, the cave of wonders. Uh where Auric is Aladdin, which makes Nia uh Abu. Uh, just, me? To, just just to, hey, to help out um to help out Tig, I do want to do just get a quick long strider cast off on on Tig. So uh, you have to swoop low to do that. If you you'll swoop low to do it, which will give you disadvantage to your next save. Uh no, because I also just realized it's a touch spell, so I don't want to do that. <laughs> just slap her on the back of the head as you go past. <laughs> and now I'm like, oh maybe I, I don't. I just cast haste on you. <laughs> Either one's going to be rough if you're flying down. So you've kind yeah. of like dodged this and you can dive or you can sort of like climb. Yep. What do you want to do? Dive or climb? Five, four, three, two, uh, wait, one. Lord, which is the, what is the difference when I, where I'm getting to? Dive uh, lets uh, you climb. cast a spell uh, but disadvantage next save. Climb will get you further away uh, to, to getting out of the bouncing I'll climb crap. for now. I'll climb for now. Okay. Um, so you climb. Uh... <laughs> Would I be able to cast a spell at all? In a, in, in, in a moment. Uh, Leaf, I want you to make a dexterity saving throw. Ooh, that's a nat 20 for a 31. Jesus. All right. Uh, tell you what, I will let you kind of be like, I've been here before. And you see a sort of crack in the ground, which you know has a ledge in it, which is like, most of the bigger boulders roll across the top if you were to fail. So you can kind of duck in there and I'll give you a couple rounds of not having to deal with this stuff. So you'll just, you just dive in. It's a bit hot, a bit smelly from all those fumes because it's, you know, like sulfurous volcanic fumes coming up, but you're just letting it. Tig sees you fall in there and knows it is way too small for her big ass to get in there. So she is just running. Now, Tig... I'm gonna yep. say you use your massive leg muscles and you can just strength sprint down this shit. Uh-huh. Um <laughs> Yeah, basically I'm gonna do that. Okay. Uh, make a strength saving throw. Actually make a strength check, sorry. Uh make it make it athletics. Check. Athletics. Uh, where are you? Your boy! Uh, 30. Alright, so you are flying above and you just start hearing this as she's running and parts of like the, the thin rocky like slate top like cracking under her feet and she's like, her, the roots like gripping in to give her more traction and she's just going down this hill. And small pebbles are like hitting in the back. She's getting a bit cut. She's getting a bit hurt. But she is absolutely fucking licking it. Barbarian's also getting extra 10 feet of movement, I believe. So she is flying down this hill. Hands in the air. <laughs> I don't think that's what's happening. It's more like, oh god, oh god, oh god. Um, yeah. But <laughs> Nia, make a dex saving throw to not fall off as he just rapidly goes and like almost barrel rolls to the side. And then flies upwards, and you're like, I'm not ready for this. <laughs> um, 
Okay, now I fall off. What's your roll? <laughs> I rolled a one. That's a total of a six. Did you have don't, any other don't... checks uh, or rerolls or anything like that left? Roll not shift. Uh... Okay, so I'll you roll you that. barrel roll and start to climb, and as you look over your shoulder, she's falling in. You like reach out in time, and she's just like just like this stutters is... like a like you a. Better have a better alternative reality than than your last character. <laughs> And uh as Well, um Yep. That's a that's a hold on. Twelve. Twelve. That's better than a six. Did you did you you used I your, a seven. Um, yeah, you I used did. your uh re roll earlier, used, right? I used favor by the gods in order to tell Mephis or not Mephis. Yeah, but did you use your did you use your um your fortune's favor? No, I didn't. No, she said she saved it. So then you still have that. You can do one more reroll. Oh wait, <laughs> that no, was the I day didn't before. Use my as well. I did. I did. No, no, no it was this morning. No, no, no. Okay. For the one that I morning. just did, I, I, I did do it because I, I didn't announce oh, it, but okay. I rerolled because I rolled like a two the first because time. Because he so was just, in a climb was... and this place is declining, you're kind of flying forward. You're almost four hundred feet in the air, so you would not okay. hit the ground before it gets to Sean's turn, Sean. Auric, buddy, are you going yeah. to go into a dive to catch Nia? Do a loopy loop catch her on the. <laughs> How far away is she? Uh, I'll say she's about. Oh, wait, that spells. I'll say because you like crunch the back up and then she like falls again, she's only 100 feet below you now and you could catch her uh, with a with a dash. I think the only thing I could do is the dive because I don't have a spell that can reach her. All right, so you just turn in. So how I think these things move 60 feet around. It's been a while since I've looked at a magic carpet. Magic carpet, I think so. God, I wish I had one more level in Sorcerer, then this would not be a problem. I could just bamf the wings out and I'd be fine. <laughs> just got a magic carpet 5e real quick. Uh... We're all 20 minutes. Yeah, uh, which, what's the size? Uh, it is five by ten feet, I believe. Two two person carpet. Uh, sixty feet per round is what I'm going to go with. Okay, I'm looking at the chart as well, where it says like eighty, sixty, forty, thirty yeah, feet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so it's got a sixty feet awesome. per thing. So you could get within uh forty feet and cast a spell, mm. or you can like. Uh, kind of like dash up there and then she has to try to in her turn grab onto the carpet so I don't believe I have a spell that isn't touch that can because I don't have feather fall like generally speaking I just don't have feather fall because I'm not a I'm not a scrub with honestly if you can get with that spell. <laughs> I'm gonna if, if you can get to a point where Kyle may allow me to make another deck save I might have a better shot I yeah you can try so to I like, think I'm just gonna dash that I'm gonna you do the dash, dash then to and try you to get, get like so underneath her so she should save. hopefully fall on it and try to like save okay okay so Leif sprint it along uh, make a acrobatics check to like as it gets like narrow if like dive between it as this place is behind you filling up with small rocks. That is uh, a uh, twenty one. Yeah, perfect. You sort of like just dive, just turn on your side, slide through, and just keep going on all fours almost. Um, all right. Tig. Tig. Uh, you see ahead of you as this big boulder boom, and smashes into a pillar. The whole pillar starts sliding. Slow at first. You can catch up to it. If you want to, I'll let you like just jump and grab it and try to climb the pillar. Yeah. Surf. Yeah, All yeah. Right. I, I want to Jason Momoa this. Yes, do it. <laughs> All right. Make a... You know what? I'm gonna say make a strength check, and Ooh. you're going to. And if you want, to, you can you can rage as you do it to make oh, it. There used you. to be this thing in Pathfinder called Raging Leap, and it was like a it was a barbarian power you could pick up. So and it lets you just your full movement. You could just fucking jump. Uh, so I'm pretty much gonna let you do that. If you if you make the the DC, you're just gonna jump like sixty feet with a dash, and just smash into the side of it. 
I'm gonna yell out to everyone. Watch this, everybody! Jesus. Like flailing in the air. Oh, just Good lord. Poof, head first. Uh, and I'm raging. Yeah, so it gives you advantage if you need it. Awesome. Uh, yeah, 29. Jeebus. Uh, all right. So 29 is really high. Uh, I'm going to say you jump hard enough that you hit it and it just goes and starts like tipping uh, with your weight slamming into it. Uh, and you guys, as as Oryx kind of like dived, he's not actually looking at your direction now. He's, he's had to go back. He's now looking up as just this whole avalanche of rock and rubble comes at you. Uh, so, Nia, please make your save. You get advantage because he's right underneath I, you. Well, I, I wanted to ask if I could ask it to be an acrobatics check because this is incredibly similar to the fight Nia had with Madness in her three-day pursuit when he threw her off the cliff. I'll allow it. Yes. <laughs> it is more of an active thing than the last one where she was falling off. Mm-hmm. Well, I feel like she had a round to like uh, be like, oh shit, I'm falling. If you fail, and I'm gonna cast like... reverse gravity on you. <laughs> well, <laughs> new problem. DM is a thirty is a thirty enough. <laughs> yeah. What would have that been if it wasn't an acrobatics and just been a deck save? It, it would have. I rolled a nineteen, so it would have been a twenty-four. <laughs> Okay, it would have been a pass anyway. Uh, yeah, yeah, I just cool. I did not trust my dice not to fuck me over. <laughs> uh, they roll so a one and then a seven. You kind of hit it, you bounce for a second, and you just grab the edge and pull yourself up. Uh, as it goes back to Oryx's turn, and you have just stopped for a second, and you are looking up. It is about 40 feet in front of you. And yeah. this it's, it's kind of like a car, I'll say, where like, if you reverse it slow, you have to kind of go forward and back if you want to get some speed up. So you're going to go into this big go away from it. Yeah, just <laughs> noom. Uh, and there's oh, so wait, this is one of these pillars is barreling towards us basically. Uh, it's kind of off the off the side, gone like a little bit past you. It's kind of like behind you a little bit, where just like okay, just millions of tons of rubble is now coming at you. Oh, okay, it's more okay. Okay, cool, cool. It's the rubble. I thought the I thought we were like in the track of the pillar coming oh, no, towards no, no, no. us. <laughs> okay, that's a little bit different. Okay, um, <clears throat> then yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna just start fucking going. Um, <laughs> but let me just see if there's eh, if I just want to dash or if there's an action I want to do because I was thinking of just like blasting some of the rocks back to give us a little bit more of it ahead. Go Sorry, nuts! But I think there's... All right, then you I'm can going feel to... that there are chunks of metal and ore in this rock as well if that helps you change there's a your... chunk of what there's chunks of metal and ore in all of these rocks if there's any ferromancy you want to use as well there might be something i don't know what you got oh i don't think i actually do have anything that can i can fuck with that right now um i i have a <laughs> clarification question did you Please. say that the carpet is semi-sentient yeah mm -hmm. does that mean it can be affected by spells that affect creatures Damn it. <laughs> I was going to cast haste on the carpet. Nope. <laughs> All right. So, um, yeah, I don't have any pheromancy spells that'll, that'll, that'll do anything here unless I wanted to kill someone. Um, <laughs> Please don't kill cast, me, Ork. We're friends. Cast singularity on him so all the metal goes towards their body. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, yes, yeah, yeah, sure. Workplace friends. Um, <laughs> make a perception uh, check. Make, make a perception check for me. Okay. <laughs> Sad. Ips about to get it. <laughs> I I rolled bad. I only got a um a ten. Okay. So uh <laughs> you start to do the turn. As you turn, uh you miss you miss a lot of things, but you do see just like a a, a caravan with a guy like a little like dwarf at front. You're like yeah, I'm trying to get away from this thing with like four little like hell. Ponies and nightmares. Four nightmares pulling along. You're just like, oh fuck, let's go. And you're just bouncing along this craggy place. So if there's something you want to do, you can do it. If there's a creature you need to target, I've given you one. But just make a decision. Wait, the cabbages. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Uh, I'm you're gonna cast singularity on that man and make all the. Do you want me to give you a ninth level spell? I'm gonna go to the next person while you look. So okay, give me one second. Yeah, Leaf. Uh, 
a big chunk smashes down behind you and just collapses part of this and hits the lava below or, or whatever is down there because just fire just erupts up behind you and then the whole area just starts closing in behind you uh use your kitty cat claws get out acrobatics if you uh, want to go pew, 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 off the walls or athletics if you just want to climb straight up i know you have a climb speed i'm just going to let it be a little bit faster than normal if you use different things that's a 22 acrobatics all right uh you kind of as it's closing you climb up grip the wall spring off one spring off the other little flip and you kind of land uh and you've kind of done like a little like pirouette like like flip and you're facing the wrong way it's like about you're faster than the rest by a good margin so this is probably about 300 feet away from you about is is the wall of just rubble and death coming at you there is uh, 150 feet in front of you is a pillar falling and you can just see tig like 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 riding it like you know like rodeo just like one hand up like woo uh and then away from that you can just see auric in the middle of the turn he's only about 50 no 40 feet i said before away from the rubble uh the rubble is moving at about a hundred feet around uh, and you can now run yeah. more if you wish <laughs> <laughs> i think like leaf leaf looks at this and he's watching everybody like moving through this and he's like well it's about time someone else yeet a damn ha around here uh and uh i i don't think he's got so i, I can do with just an action and a bonus action, I can do 80 feet per round, mm -hmm. which I think is about as fast as everybody else can go. So I think I'm going to, like, hold an action with the gun to see if, like, anybody is in danger of getting hit by something, if he can, okay. like, blast it. Okay, so if something fails, I'll let you blast to, to save, effectively. Um, and then what I'll say is, is you can see from the cracks and crevices the sort of the the wildlife of hell like not necessarily the full-blown like sentient devils but more like it's almost like fiendish rocks and uh rock roc um and and like massive insects like just like hell locusts and stuff like that just all coming up out of the ground uh and these things like the locusts will be about the size of a small car and the rock would be about the size of a small plane um so they're big creatures that have been nesting here and feeding on on the souls of the damned now they're like oh rocks are coming we're leaving start to take off uh okay before we go back to no it's tig first tig are you just gonna ride this thing as it falls or are you gonna start running it up, up it as it falls uh, i'm gonna start running up it as it falls trying to get to the top of the pillar <laughs> Um, I know that the carpet only has a certain carrying capacity, so I'm basically just trying to get to the top and... If you get to the carpet and you do get on it, it, halves, it just halves our speed. Okay. Okay. Uh, I, Still not fast. Tig doesn't know that though, so I'm going to go off of that. Um, yeah, I'm just going to try and get to the top and try to tame this beast. That okay, so you're, you're running up the pillar. And mm -hmm. you start noticing that there's, like, carved holes in the side of it. And someone's just, like, someone, like, starts pulling themselves out to be like, what's going on? Uh, and they right in your way. It's a, uh... Punt it. Make an attack. <laughs> it's in the way. It's... Is that a I'm reckless gonna... attack? Are you going to roll with advantage? Yes. Uh, are you kicking or are you going to swing arm down and whack it? Uh, yeah, swing arm and just poof. Not a problem anymore. Yep. <laughs> yes. Um, Why, uh, yes. <laughs> just a basic attack. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> 30. Okay. Uh, you just... I'm not even going to have you roll damage. You just kind of <laughs> swipe it and one of your claws hooks under its jaw. You just rip it out of the hole. You just throw this thing into the air and this boulder just pastes it. And just like... You see the guy like sort of break on it. They stay stuck to it and it just... Poof, hits the ground and slides. Just leaving a little red smear <laughs> on the ground. Um, no time. 
no time. <laughs> and as you run past, you hear, Dad? Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you you are almost at the top. Oh. Now, usually it's Nia's turn, but since she's on the back of the thing with Auric and it's going to be very important as to what she does, I'm going to... I had something to do to help Auric. Was okay, was go for it. Hoping to do. I was hoping to take control of the flying carpet. Uh, and let Orc focus on a, let to, on steering, and let Orc focus on casting a spell to maybe make it a little easier for him. You want to? This will be your entire turn if you do that. That's okay. That's okay because I I don't have. I thought I might be able to blast some stuff out of the way. I don't have any spells. That can you do don't have Eldritch Blast. This. Well, I do. I just don't think it's gonna do much. And so much damage you do. It's a D10, man. <laughs> Is it one singular D10? Yeah. Okay. I mean, per blast, so... Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, you can fire multiple blasts. Yeah, I, I Shooting think rocks. I'd rather... Shooting rocks? I, I think I would rather give or Oryx some help to help us uh, get out of the way since he is All Magic right. Man. For a... There's a second of, like, I'm, I'm, do, I'm doing as... Because... Is a high-stress well, situation. She would, inform, she would inform, like, say, focus on your spells. I'll steer you feel like you've never been in a high stress situation then. uh because when there's shit going down and someone tries to grab your steering wheel you're usually not like oh yes i completely understand at this moment what you're doing it's just no, like oh I, fuck you're shit you're, okay you're mis- and you go but you've got it you've got it and he can focus on his spells okay okay cool or what are you doing so so is nia piloting the the carpet now yes and cool. she's got it actually is moving good. a bit what are you doing? What are you doing, Sean? Uh, oh, I'm going to turn around and uh, <clears throat> brandish the staff, and I'm going to cast uh, r- Ravenous Void uh, behind all of these rocks to eat them. Is that the ninth level one? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's basically I've created a 20-foot uh, radius sphere of darkness, that devours and pulls everything a hundred uh, feet around it in. I'm going to cast it so it's not going to eat Tig, um, but eat the rocks that are falling towards the rest of us. Okay, so you throw, you put the stuff out, and it's just... And it's like all just into reality. And all the rocks, mm-hmm. they just sort of stop. And like you can see like one is like close enough for you to touch. It's just there, and then get sucked backwards and there's just this channel now being created uh and because you did take a second to like you know change because it's an action to like change uh you know the owners of the the carpet effectively um it's they're now kind of like coming past you but in subsequent turns you will be able to pull ahead of this again um so as nia's just like fucking going as fast as she can and you have because this isn't a concentration spell, is it? You just you just cast it? No, it's just a one and done. It's a, a void. Well, actually, no, it is a concentration. So we'll keep we'll keep eating eating rocks. If okay. For a minute. So you can keep that there, and she can just keep flying, uh, to to have this. So just to add a little flavor to it, the the head of Oryx staff, um, the, the decahedron that's there shifts entirely, almost like a, a ferro fluid, into a. Uh, seven pointed star um, that is kind of like manifesting and controlling the sphere. I'm, I'm just, I've decided to take the components of the spell and, and have the head of the staff turn into it. Okay, nice. Uh, leaf. There's Sorry, no one. Star. <laughs> there's no one currently in danger of being crushed. I'll let you take your action if you want now to to, to get a bit further away if you want to. Uh, yeah, sure. Can I jump on one of those uh, locusts? Yeah, you can. You can yee haw some 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 locusts. You can. Everybody's yee hawed except for me. Still, <laughs> not a true that's, cowboy. That's yeah. No, the actual crime here is that the cowboy kitty isn't. Uh, do you? I'm gonna say you still have a like chain bolt for your crossbow. So if you want to, you can stow the gun, pull the crossbow, and just and Memories. just make yeah, an attack that roll. That's what I will do. That is a 29. All right. Uh, make a strength check just to hold on as this thing starts lifting in the air. 
Strength uh -oh. or athletics, your choice. They, they, uh, they your choices right now. Uh oh. I believe in you. That's a six. Oh. Okay. Uh. Make. Just make a luck check. One to ten. One to twenty. Sorry, you need one to ten to fail. Uh, Eleven to twenty is a success. It's a critical fail. Oh no! Oh, okay. I see Leaf's luck has preceded him. Uh, so yeah, thump, smacks into a locust, and because you're like it's like moving, and you haven't used this chain bolt for a while, and like you wrap your arm around it, and you've just shot the locust in the head, and it just falls into a into a ditch, and you start getting dragged towards it. Not great, considering you're not moving too fast, but it's just this inexorable pull uh, towards the thing. You are currently more or less just in the path of the rocks. You're like 10 feet to the side, and you'll be out of it because of the channel that Oryx Spell is cutting, but you cannot seem to get out. But you were 300 feet ahead, 100 feet around, you got a couple of rounds. Uh, right. Tig. You get to the top at a full sprint. There's nothing up there, nothing nearby. But there is another pillar that you could potentially jump to, which has not been hit yet, which is maybe 50 feet if you just want to once again just rage jump out there. It's like Hulk jumping from building yeah, to building. Yeah, pretty much. Um, especially since this black sphere has just appeared. Um, this is very much reminiscing of uh, when that happened to Tig's arm. Yep, yep, With yep. Last Magic Man. So I'm going to harness that rage and fucking go for this other pillar. Tell you what, actually. Make a perception check for me. Uh, uh, oh, 18. Okay. You see the pillar slightly off to the side. Hmm. There's a smaller one that's a bit off bit further off but if you hit it hard enough it will fall on leaf's chain stopping his slide yeah i'm gonna go for that one make a flat athletics check you don't get advantage for this one all right twenty five Okay, okay. You hit the side of it. Uh, what is your flat damage usually on your attacks? Oh, Jesus. Uh, uh, strength. Plus eight. What's your strength? It's plus seven, right? Uh, plus eight. Plus eight, cool. So you land, and as you kind of land, you just punch the side of it, and it's... Boom, about... Five feet in front of you, Leaf. This pillar just crashes down, stopping the chain, which you can now like unwrap from your arm, uh, and you have a chance to to get out of here. As I land in front of you, just like, why are we here? <laughs> this is what happens when you do a good job. This is the type of place he sends you. This is who we're dealing with. Your boss sucks. Uh, <laughs> those on the carpet can see that uh you're getting closer not too close but closer to the um the big skeleton of skull and a sort of shimmer in the air and it was like it was like a holographic projection of this very uh attractive devil is would you like a hand friends of leaf That's to you, Auric. And, and, and Nia. I'll say, I said it both you, just off the side of you. Traveling with you. Oh, like traveling alongside us? Yeah. How far away is the castle? Uh, four or five kilometers, miles, whichever one you want to use from wherever you are in the world. <laughs> does this, um, 
Does this uh, collapsing torrent of rocks uh, look like it's going to no longer be a problem at any time soon, or is it going to be the entire way to the castle? Uh, I guess more so for the folks down below. The longer we're on the curve and in the air, we'll probably be out of it. Yeah. So yeah, you, you're going to be fine. The people on the ground will eventually like if they stay in your path, your thing. They should be fine for a, a good long while. The problem is they're going to have to cut across to get behind so like it will stop the avalanche, which gives them more mm. chance of being crushed by the avalanche. They're a damned if they do, damned if they don't situation right now. Okay. Hmm. My name is Klaus. I'm a friend of Leaf of Old. I, you know, you don't have to take the help. Did you say her name was Glacia? Yep. We need to find her, right? That is something we're... Mm -hmm. Yes! The answer is yes. Uh, and you see about a hundred feet from you, Leaf and Tig, another gate opens. But it's more like an arcane portal. And a second one appears on a balcony at the skull. I just scoop up leaf. It's like, we go this way. Tig make executive decision. Ooh. <laughs> that was a big word for Tig. I'm proud. That's two big words. Uh, yeah, she thinks it's three words, guys. <laughs> it's exec and utive. Uh, yeah. And then uh, I'll say I my ear. Fuck. just for easy, just for easy sake, your carpets dives through the hole. You're running, dive through the hole. And you're all just in a pile at the foot of this nine foot tall, exquisitely otherworldly, beautiful devil. Well, you uh, didn't say she was nine feet tall now. Come on. And well, she was a hologram. That, she was probably. That yeah. is the end of the session. That's where we'll can end. I just, can, I, can I just end with Auric uh, looking daggers at Nia for a moment? <laughs> Nia gives no fucks. Not any. That's Our it. Friend, in her eyes, That's her it. friends were about to die. We're good. That's it. Uh, we're here. Uh, Oryx calculating in mind. He's like, you just made a deal with the devil without reading any of the fine print. I, hey. I didn't make a deal all with All right, anything. we're done with this. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you it's all enjoyed it. this session. It had some... some oh, a bit of a tone shift as he went through the portal. Uh uh yeah um we'll do a real quick round of goodbyes and then a single favorite moment at the same time just one um yeah we'll start with Teague who are you where are you from favorite moment Hey everybody, I'm T well, I played Tig today. Uh, some of you may know me just as Tig or as Shro or Shrogrill or just Sarah. I kind of exist all over the place, mostly in the meat space or right here, right now, playing DD with this fabulous crew. Um, I definitely had a good time playing Tig today. I think my favorite moment uh, for most of it was, uh, I'm gonna quote you in my thesis from Auric, um, but the, at least someone ye to fucking ha definitely <laughs> took the final cake on that one. So thank you, Mike. It was a beautiful gem. I'll throw it onto Mike now, actually, given that. Yeah, go for it. Uh, yeah, I'm Mike. Uh, I played Leaf. I'm the DM over at Wonders and Blunders. You can check us out wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, and I think my favorite moment, I actually like, this is j just generally like, sure. I haven't gotten to play with you very much before, but I really enjoy, uh, how much you as a player, like know and understand what's going on and how, <laughs> like, I can, I, I can like feel the, <laughs> the like grind between you wanting to tell us the right thing to do and take <laughs> not being able to do it. Um, like you you're still like as tig giving me better ideas than i have when i'm supposed to be playing <laughs> <a city. laughs> Thank you. it's like tell him about the room full of demon army i'm like oh yeah that's really important actually uh all right who do you want to throw it to i'll throw it to shelby uh 
Hi, my name is Shelby or Shibby Dibby Do on Twitter where I draw D D stuff. I'm Whistle While You Work on YouTube where I tell stories about D D stuff. And I'm She Doodle on Twitch here where I either play games, uh, draw D D stuff, or I play D D stuff like here today. Uh, I play in our uh, World of Darkness game. I also play over in a game on Critical Failsafe, uh, but here I have been Nia. And my favorite moment, I think, was that moment at the very end, Sean, just or glaring <laughs> daggers. Because in my mind, my immediate comeback, I have a comeback for this. The minute Oryx says something to me, I have such a good snapback for this that may or may not cause problems between these two. But this will be interesting because we haven't really seen too much of their interaction over the campaign as a whole. So okay. seeing a little clash of them will be fun. Sean? Uh, so my favorite moment, or one of my favorite moments, is um, I really enjoyed Nia's resistance to Dispater, uh, and I was glad to be able to help in that, because I really <laughs> liked the line that she said, and I wanted to make sure that she could say it, and that, that Nia could get that line out of just like, I, you're, you, just the simple line of, you're someone who can help me find someone. Like, the, the way that you delivered it was really good, and I was like, I'm going to make sure that line happens. Because <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, Oric... That. Like, it's also like a little sign that like Oric, like because Oric and Nia haven't had a conversation at all since the last since Oric said we need to have a conversation, and when it was you were kind of like a and she was when I was soulless, yeah. It. it was a reassurance uh, to to Nia that uh, he is supportive of her, but also I just liked your performance in that scene, um, and uh, I'm excited for I, and generally Nova like. I mean, we could spend a full three hours with just the conversation between Dispater and Oric there. Um, I really enjoy the, you indulging me in those things because they do, they may seem, they may, some of it may seem esoteric and just for the joy of, of role play, but Oric is always working towards something and um, all of these things are important for what he wants to do for himself and for these people here. Okay. Thank you. Uh, did you tell us where you are? Who you who you're from? No, he just went uh, right into Facebook. I'm Sean. I am a creative director of a place called Paradise. It is a paradise of sorts for D and D and nerdy shit. Um, we are ending our hiatus soon um, after the end of our first long form campaign. We'll have a show starting either uh, at some point in December. Uh, the official start date will be announced soon, as well as our guest DM. Um, and uh, after that, we will be entering into the new year. We will be entering into a new show, a new campaign, um, and other new shows throughout the year um, and other adventures. Um, catch me this week for the Relaxing in Paradise, kind of to kick off the beginning of the end of the hiatus, um, where we'll be working on some stuff. Um, painting some stuff, maybe 3D printing some stuff, drawing a map, who knows, all sorts of things. Um, and uh, yeah, and I've been Auric. And I will throw it to Nova. The only person who hasn't done anything. So yeah, that makes I'm sense. I'm throwing it to Shannon. 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 <laughs> Shannon. Um. Hi, everybody. No. I'm Shannon. I am the community manager over at Paradise Productions. Um, I'm the community uh, manager. Not even here to defend herself. The, the um, first time. I'm the, the first time manager. Shannon has gone to actually say she's the community manager. Is and I'm the community impression. manager. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. That's, That's so bad. All I'm right. so sorry. I know you're going to watch this, and I'm sorry, and I don't condemn. I, I really hope someone can clip that so we can send it to Shannon. That'd be great. I'm on it. It's because uh, I haven't received a Mylar photo. Uh, okay. Hi. My name is Nova. Uh, I run this crazy place. Uh, had a good time tonight. Uh, I think my favorite moments, nearly everyone said I did love the, the Shelby standing up to Despater. I felt like that was really good. It was a good use of like abilities to be like, no, this is what I want to say and do. Um, I did really enjoy certain lines that you said as you talked to Despater Sean. That was 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 very good. Uh, I I loved that your version, Sarah, of um, my the thing you do to to help you ease you through, you know this this sort of like torment that you went through was to mm. put yourself in a hole. And I was like, oh, that's not good because I know what happens in holes here. Uh, mm. And then. I absolutely adored the uh, chat between uh, you and Titties. 
Uh, it was great. There were certain lines there of like you just being like stoic or badass, and also like just just quips that you were like throwing at him. So it kind of like felt really really good. Um, yeah, loved it. Uh, yeah, cool. Let's see if there's someone to rate. I think our good old uh, friends over at Nerds of the West are still doing a thing today. But if anyone has any other recommendations, I am happy to hear them. Because every now and again I want to throw love to someone that's also playing D&D. &D, not just my, my buddies. What do we, we got at the moment? I don't have any... Oh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, yeah, nobody that's doing 5e right uh, now. There's a D20 TV. They're doing their very first session. Uh, session 29, sorry. Their very first session uh, 29? Yeah, yeah cool. so it says the first wife session 29, but it's I realise it's the title. So there's D20 TV. Uh, otherwise, yeah, Nerds of the West. Yeah, we'll, we'll do that. We'll go with Nerds of the West. Uh, we're going to just do our 30 second ad thing. If you could please... Uh, stick around to watch it, that'd be great. It helps the channel out. Uh, and we will be continuing on in a sec. So wave goodbye, guys. Okay. Bye, everybody. <laughs> bye, bye bye. And where's my end button? Keep waving, never stop. You the